Hi Hello. everyone. Took a while, but there we are. Yes. Welcome to another MSI Inside live stream. Yes, sorry, we had some uh, wardrobe uh, technicalities. Somebody pissed himself. No, just kidding. <laughs> we had a, a Facebook challenge, but they should be yes. able to view us yeah, as well it's now. It's uh, inherent with uh, trying to live stream on multiple platforms. Uh, so we're live streaming indeed on uh, uh, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and multiple instances of Twitter. So yeah, that uh, does come with challenges every now and again. But uh, we, sh I think we've solved it, right? More, more channels, more challenges. But yeah, it yeah, seems to work. Yeah, seems yeah. to work. You know. There's, there's no point in doing something if it's only ever easy, right? So, <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Yes. So today, we're going to talk about uh, this guy over here, the MAG Forge M100 series. There are two models. This one right here is the M100R. Uh, later in the stream, I will also do a live build um, with this case. You already see some components in front of Peter right there. Um, I want to grab them, but I can't. <laughs> Um, and after that, if it works, still remains to be seen, but if it works, we're also going to uh, play a game on it. It takes two. I actually played it before. One of my favorite co-op games, if not my favorite. It's new for you, right, Peter? Yeah, I, I, the, the, the intro kind of got me already. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Artist90k is asking, where is Eric? Hi, Artist. Nice to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. He said uh, hi, hi, Peter and Mikhail earlier as well. So. Um, yeah, it's new indeed, and uh, you, well, you haven't said which one it is, right? Do you want to spoil it, or...? I said which case it is. No, the game. Oh, the game. It takes two. Okay. It does, and uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's not the typical... I mean, you've got games that start with, like, a, a thing that you think, oh, okay. You know, you've got games that start with, you know, murder, genocide, or whatever, you know, all <laughs> kinds of horrific things, but <laughs> this thing does take the cake for me, because it, it starts with, you know, a, 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 like a family, young family. Spoiler uh, alert! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you've never, it, this is like the intro movie of the of the the game, so it doesn't matter. But it, 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 it's 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 a couple and and a young kid, and it's about the parents deciding they want to split up, and and the kid being very very sad at that, and that just it's like wh why would you do that? That's like, you know, killing and all kinds of horrific stuff. Fine, but this, like. That genuinely just makes you depressed. Oh, or I remember sad. one scene from this game. For the people who played it, the scene with the elephant. That's brutal. We won't get that far today, unfortunately, because it's quite deep in the game. So Oof. we don't have enough time to play that far. But yeah, but we're going to play a as a couple. Scene. And we're going to be just as uh, annoying to each other as, a, as an Definitely. actual couple. Probably. We have to work together. Oof. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or against each other. I see some people in the chat who played it and know about the elephant. <laughs> the elephant in the room? <laughs> exactly. All right then. Um, so wubba dub dub. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Let's uh, first give you a bit of a, an introduction about the case we're uh, building in today. Because, of course, this is the star of the show. Um, I see Are you sure that the star isn't over your left shoulder? Right there. The giveaway! Oh, so Peter, what's the giveaway for today? Yeah, the giveaway for today is uh, several game copies or game codes for Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, for the base game and the Dawn of Ragnarok DLC. So you get both, actually. Yeah, so two codes with some yeah. instructions. Yes. Credit is asking non-K overclock, please. I'm not going to do that today because it would take too much time. Especially since I also need to build it and we want to play It Takes Two as well. But we actually did a dedicated live stream with our MAG B660M Mortar Max Wi-Fi DDR4. And there, um, Ruth actually joined us to ex explain in detail on how you can overclock with this B660 motherboard. You can overclock your CPU with it. Uh, so definitely check that out. It's available on YouTube and you will get step by step what you have to do in order to overclock on that motherboard. Yes. Um, and uh, Kemi2 is asking, are, are you two really there? Yes, we are really here. Uh, but we are not sitting physically next to each other. We, we could, because here where, where we are in the Netherlands, it is, it's fine. Uh, there's, there's, at the moment, at least, there's no regulation to say that we're, we're not allowed to do that. Uh, but we don't do that, indeed. So you can make yourself disappear, actually. Because uh, IRL, <laughs> we, we don't get along. <laughs> and then we have to play a co-op game exactly, together. Yeah, that's that's going to be a challenge. They, they made us do this. No, just kidding. <laughs> that's going to be like the, the tagline of the... No. <laughs> anyway. Yes. Uh, let me see. Keller B says, totally looks like Forge M100R. 
Maybe because it is. A stream elements running should be. Yeah, uh, indeed, it should be. But that means that I think uh, the command of next week, uh, uh, exclamation mark next week, that should work. That should give you the topic for next week's live stream. Um, other than that, I think every five minutes, yeah, the link should be posting. If not, then uh, I can always do it manually. But it's like, you know, w give it five minutes and then it should, it should be working. Right? Right. <laughs> I hope it is. So oh, a question wow. from Luke about availability of the, the motherboard we're using today. So the B660M Mortar Max Wi-Fi DDR4. Uh, about availability in the EU, it should be uh, later this month, but best to check with your local reseller. Oh, uh, I see. Because even within the EU, it can differ per country when it arrives. Yeah, uh, uh, Chronic Mayhem, I, I see you, sa you said, there we go, as in, uh, did the uh, stream elements post the link? Because we cannot see it, it's being filtered out for our chat. Yeah. But so we've got is like it posting a the link chat. now? Or? Artis says, Mike, have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> That's actually to remind myself in case okay. my build doesn't work today. Yes. <laughs> Have you tried taking it apart again? <laughs> Let's have hope I don't have to do that. Should be a nice one. Like, have you tried reseeding the CPU? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Good to hear that the um, yeah, good to hear that the uh, that the stream elements is indeed posting the link. So HG A H D R G music says I have the same case. Wondering if the Maybe. front panel is removable. Also, how it should be removable. I haven't yes. tried yet, but my guess would be like Oof. this. Just there we go. So yes, it's removable. Just it, yeah, but careful though, because there yep. was a, a cable attached to it. Yeah, this, right uh, now it's not connected. That's for the RGB button right here. Exactly, it's not connected to the motherboard yet. But when the, when it is connected to the motherboard, I wouldn't just yep. yank it out like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at the bottom, you actually see right here. You can put your fingers in it and pull that, and then you can remove the front panel. Be gentle though. So that's the trick. Don't do it. Yeah. The way I did it, do it more gentle. Exactly. <laughs> Michiel, Michiel likes to, you know, manhandle his cases. <laughs> that's, that's his thing. It's just quality assurance. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Uh, so, alright, see so a question about radiator support. So, let's maybe take a more detailed look into this case because yes. I prepared some slides for you guys so you get some more details. Oh, God, here about we go. All the specs, all the features. Oh, by the way, just before you go into that. Yes. Um, uh, Action Brother said uh, that the bot did post the link a couple of times, but the, uh, oh sorry, Chronic Mayhem actually said it, but the command still doesn't work. That's right, we have disabled the command because in the past people kept spamming the, uh, this command. Exclamation mark so giveaway, yeah. The chat would be full of the link for yeah. the giveaway, so. We put uh, it with we, the timer. Yeah, we, we disabled that and indeed have switched to a timer, a five minute timer instead. So yes, it, it is correct that the link doesn't work. Uh, sorry, the uh, command doesn't work, so it's not activated. Yes, thank you. All right, let's get going on the case. Uh, Jim is saying front oh. pedals need a better method to remove other than yanking, in my honest opinion. Uh, JCB? You could, it could be like a screw mechanism, but it would take a lot more time and you don't have to remove it that often. It's basically, you only have to be there if you're going to do something with your front fans uh, or radiator in the front. Uh, that's when you would access it. Actually, I think that mechanism it works uh, it's not something you will have to remove like 10 or 20 times so. you, well you shouldn't I, yeah. it, probably there's gonna be some people that don't. I mean if you want to switch your fans out every day then yes you're gonna be removing it a lot but yeah ideally no that you're gonna do it maybe the ones to set it up and that's it but yeah screw mechanism would also make it a little bit more magnets? expensive and especially you will see it later on because we'll talk about the price yeah. this is actually a very very affordable case but what about magnets that's also expensive right yeah magnets would also especially be. if you want them to be strong enough to actually yeah keep it in place and still even if you're going for expensive strong magnets it will still be weaker than the current system that true. we're using true how fine is the front mesh will it be a dust magnet then he got them is asking well, uh, do we have a, do you, do you want to go to the, there yeah, we go. Yeah. oh, you already did it, there you go. <laughs> so it's not that fine, actually. It's like, no. uh, I, I would call this the, the, like the regular mesh. I'm not sure, but the, you see this in, in like many cases, literally, it's like the standard size mesh, I would but say. But in the front, there is no additional dust filter. Um, yeah. So depending on, it of course, depends very much on the room, oh. um, where it is, if, if you have a very dusty room, then yes, make sure to keep it clean. Yeah. 
You, you um, already answered Starview's uh, answer. Uh, yeah, question no, in there. the front is no dust filter. Yeah. On top and the bottom there is. Um, but yeah, having a dust filter also, of course, has an influence on um, oh. uh, the uh, airflow as well. Yeah. So it's it's always a trade-off. The fans uh, are 120 mil, I think. Yes. Yeah. But let's uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into this, and we'll it will already answer most of your uh, questions. Exactly. I would assume. Can I have a free PC? Oh, we have somebody from Facebook joining. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, sorry. Avon, we don't, we don't give do you have any free preference, PCs. like for the free PC? Should it have like an i9 3090 Ti? Press? I don't know. I mean, there's a there's a good record of like <laughs> a, a previous Twitch channel that gave away free PCs to their I think so-called ambassadors that that didn't end up going that well. <laughs> Not sure if anybody knows the story, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> continue, Mike. Yes. Um, so to start off with, our cases so far that we have released have all been either ATX or extended ATX cases, so relatively big cases. This is our first micro ATX case. This also means that it does not support regular ATX motherboards. So keep in mind that if you're going for this case, you get either a micro ATX or a mini ITX motherboard. Both can fit inside this case. Mm. Um, also, of course, because it's a smaller case, uh, component clearance will be a little bit different than what you're used to for a full ATX or even extended ATX case. So for CPU cooler, it's still quite standard 160 millimeter. You can fit the vast majority of tower coolers in there. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. GPU length up to 300 millimeters. Um, that means it can fit most graphics cards, but definitely not all. So if you have the biggest models, like high-end Supreme cards, for example, those will be too big because they're longer than 300 millimeters. So that's something yeah. to keep in mind. Today we'll be building with a uh, dual graphics card. 30 centimeters right or 300 millimeters is still quite long, though. So you, yeah. you'll be able to fit most cards, only some of the, the extremes, indeed, at the... Probably Especially like dual fan models shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, but triple fan models, you may run into yeah. some issues, especially with the higher end ones, and, and also especially on the higher end of the GPUs, like, I don't know, definitely. 3080 and up, maybe. So definitely check that out, whether or not it fits. Um, well, and I also, if you're placing a radiator in front, that has yes. an influence on how much space you have available for your graphics card. Power supply um, actually can fit very long power supplies, uh, hmm. but at a certain point, you'll have to remove the hard uh, disk tray um, that's underneath the PSU Strout yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, like the, the vast majority of power supplies can fit in here even with the hard I was going to say, do you know install. a power supply, like a, a regular size power supply, like ATX or something, up to 30 centimeters? I've never seen one that long. Actually, in the very past, no, not really up to 30. I haven't seen yeah. those. Um, but in the, in the past, you had like these very powerful 1500 watt power supplies. Mm -hmm. um, that were really, really long in the past. Like nowadays, even um, our latest one kilowatt power supply, yep. for example, yeah. is, is very compact. ATX, yeah, it's a regular size. Yeah, mm. but uh, it's relatively short, but the older uh, one kilowatt and above power supplies could be very long. Mm. Um, definitely not 30 centimeters, but a lot longer than yeah. what you will see in the more recent generations. Mm. Artist asking, can I install a 360 millimeter AIO in the top? No, you cannot, but I'll give you more details about that later. So mesh, we already had a question about this. The whole <laughs> front of the case is made of mesh. So on the one hand, this is very good for airflow and airflow in this case will be really good because it comes with three pre-installed fans in the front. Um, but the downside of course is that it will gather a bit more dust than if you would have like a closed front. So it's, it's always a bit of a trade-off. Of course, partly you could fix this with a dust filter, but that would on one hand make it more expensive and on the other hand also obstruct airflow a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so we decided to go with traditional mesh on the front, uh, real focus on airflow. Yep. Uh, so even if you're going for more powerful, more power hungry components, it should still be able to cool it. Power Burn is asking, Mike, did you wear that shirt especially for me? Oh, God. Yes, of course. <laughs> He Power always wears our what IT you guy. Likes, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is basically the answer he gives nine out of ten times if people in the office ask him something. <laughs> <laughs> Igor is asking, when are uh, AMD 7000 processors coming? Greetings from Slovenia. Unfortunately, I cannot give you any details about this. That's no. up to AMD. Um, let's talk a bit more about this airflow um, because 
Apart from the three fans in the front, you can also fit two additional fans in the top. Today, we're going to use that um, to put in a 240 millimeter radiator. And in the rear, by default, there is already um, a 120 millimeter fan as well. So I hope this, this answers Edwin's question who was asking with fans or without fans. So it, it does so they come, come with, with fans, yeah. four times 120 millimeters. There you go. Um, Amana is asking what model fan is included. More about that later because this differs if you're talking about the M100A or the M100R. Hmm. Um, by default, the three fans in the front are intake fans. So they will take the cool air um, and pull it into the case. And the fan on the rear is an outtake fan. Um, if you position fans in the top, I would definitely suggest to use them as outtake fans. Mm -hmm. That's also what we're going to do with the radiator that we're going to position. So that will pull air out of the case. Yeah. So basically you're creating a, like a wind tunnel. Yeah. Um, um, Mixer is, is asking, can it handle a 3070? I think that's the most high-end GPU that fits. No, depends I think on Depends on the model. Exactly. There are yeah. uh, uh, even 3090, maybe even 3090 Ti. If you're talking about, for example, the uh, NVIDIA Founders Edition, those are relatively short. They're not long. So probably those will, those will fit. So it's not really limited to a, a GPU per se. It's more the, the physical shape and, and length of the actual model. So I actually have something right here. Ooh. And I took this here for scale. <laughs> because this is our MPG Gangneer 110R white. So this is a full ATX case, not extended ATX, full ATX. Yeah. So as you can see, it's a bit higher. It's also a bit wider. Um, it's quite a bit heavier as well. <laughs> And actually inside this case, let me turn this around a little bit. You see a graphics card right there. Usually you will mount it higher, but for video recording purposes, we put it here for this situation. <laughs> but this, this is actually a 3070 uh, Supreme graphics yep. card, or 3070 Ti Supreme, I believe it is. But I think it's the same size as 3070 Supreme. Yeah, pretty much, assume. yeah, probably. There's not uh, that much difference. Yeah. But, but even a 3080 or 3080 uh, I think they're the Supreme, same size, right? They are, they might be a little bit um, fatter, let's say. But yeah, in yeah. terms of length, I think they are mostly the same length, maybe even all the way up to the 3090 Ti Supreme. Because the length, I mean, they're all three fans and they all yeah. use the same size of fan. So in terms of length, uh, that doesn't matter. The, the, the biggest difference is going to be how much uh, or how big the heat sink is and how many heat pipes are in there. Uh, that basically makes the, the, them the, uh, the heat sink a bit fatter, let's say. <laughs> so it, it's going to take up more slots. So this one takes up, I think, just over two slots, maybe two and a half. And all the way up to a 3090 Ti, that's going to probably take up around, well, over, yeah, three or, or even more slots, I believe. So yeah, that's just so that the heat sink is bigger so that it can actually uh, deal with the heat. But as you can see, this is quite a long graphics card. It's a triple fan model. This model would not fit in this case, for nope. example, because this is, I believe, 300 just, and... Just over three, 300. Yeah, yeah, I think a little bit over 320. Three, three, yeah. So that will be too, too long for this case. But for example, Ventus cards are usually probably a little bit shorter. So Ventus might actually fit. Yeah. That's also why in some of the uh, more uh, compact builds we have, like the, I think it was P100X that we covered a couple of weeks ago, and also... Um, uh, the Trident X that we covered. So those are smaller form factor builds. Uh, all of those use uh, usually use Ventus cards because they are uh, usually also the, like... A little bit more compact. Yeah, just a bit compact indeed. Yeah. So they, they don't have all the, the physical embellishments. Uh, so they're, they're a bit more compact. So they are able to fit within those uh, more constrained quarters. Let's see, a question from HDRG Music. Uh, might be a new question, but does the ARGB fan work? with all the motherboards. I wouldn't say that's a new question because RGB can be a little bit complex. Yes. Uh, you actually have several uh, standards for it. The regular RGB, so the non-addressable one, actually uses a 12-fold header, a four-pin header on the motherboard, whereas addressable RGB, so the ARGB, uses a three-pin um, uh, header, five folds, um, that on MSI motherboards is called J-Rainbow header. Uh, whereas the 4-pin 12 volts is called the JRGB header. So if you have a J Rainbow header, then you can use it with the ARGB in the M100R. So let me put this one aside because it takes a little bit too much space. And then let's take a look at the radiator and the fan support. So in this case, um, 
As mentioned, it comes with three 120 millimeter fans uh, by default in the front. Um, it can fit up to a 240 millimeter radiator. The reason why it cannot fit a 360 is because you would be obstructed with the bottom fan. Um, of course, because it's a more compact case, you don't have you just have limited space to work with. That means it can support radiators up to 240 millimeters, um, either at the front or at the top, and in the rear up to 120 millimeters. Um, in terms of fans, like I explained to you, you can add two more fans uh, in the top as well if you're not going to use a radiator. Um, so plenty of airflow to work with here. Yep. Jack Ryder, we intend to. Just stick around. We will do a build with it. That's actually what we're going to do today. Yes. So dust filter, as mentioned, there's no dust filter in the front, but there is a magnetic dust filter at the top. Oh, you can, can find you? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. right here. So you can easily remove it and put it back on. And there is also a dust filter at the power supply on the bottom. Uh, here we go. Yeah. And that one you can just slide out, I guess, right? Yes. Then in terms of storage, several possibilities. Let me open it up so I can show you the internals as well. So you can choose for uh, different configurations. Um, you can fit up to four drives in total. You can either go for uh, two times three and a half and two times two and a half or one three and a half and three two and a half inch drives. And you can, let me turn this around a little bit, two of them you can position here and here and the other two are actually hidden right here. This is the hard, hard disk bay um, and this is removable as well. So if you're going for a very long power supply, and as you can see, then it has to be a very long power supply, you yes. can take this out. There's actually a screw at the bottom right there. If you take it out, you can uh, fit even more in there in case you don't want to use as many drives. Um, of course, more and more people are using M.2 drives as well. That's also what we're using today. Um, so not everyone has a need for those, and then maybe you can use that space for something else. And of course, I mean, these days you'll be probably able to use uh, or likely to use some M.2 drives on the motherboard as well. So these are the, you yep. know, the bigger storage um, exactly. spaces, let's say, for two and a half inch and or, and or three and a half inch. Um, Asian Venom says, strange to not have a filter in the front. It would make the case significantly more expensive. Um, and especially at this price point, you later on, filter. You, yeah, the dust hmm. filter at the front. Also, the, the front one would be the most complicated and most uh, expensive one out of the bunch. Um, so yeah, it, it would have uh, it would lead to a price increase, uh, mm. and we wanted to reach a certain price point with this case because it really is a very affordable case, especially if you see what it offers. But more about that later about pricing and availability. Info. Yep. This is something specifically for the M100R model. Um, because the M100A comes with an acrylic side panel, whereas the M100R comes with a tempered glass side panel. Right now, I have the M100R, so this is a three millimeter thick tempered glass side panel. Um, and it does not only look very nice, but it's also very sturdy. And right now, with all the studio lights, <laughs> you uh -huh. can see a bit of a reflection. And there are some more features specifically for the Forge M100R that the M100A does not have, and one of them is addressable RGB lighting. The M100A model does come with RGB, but it's auto RGB, as we call it. This is something that is connected by Molex connector, whereas um, the ARGB one uses one of those five volt three pin connectors. Um, so this one, here you can control the RGB, you can sync it up with, the, with your motherboard, uh, you can use the install light loop button on the front of the case and also this comes with a 1 to 6 ARGB control board. That one is located behind the motherboard tray. Peter, can you go to close? Yeah, oh, sorry, I was just, uh, because there was a question about this by Sh ah. Silent Shadow and said, I see it has an RGB hub, is that a splitter or USB controlled? 
Well, you're about to find out. Yes, let me show you. Yes. Right here, you will find uh, the uh, six-port ARGB hub. You can see four connectors are already connected, so it's the three fans in the front and the ARGB fan in the rear. You have two more positions, so if you would, for example, install two fans in the top, you can also connect them to um, this PCB right here. And actually, with a single connector from this PCB to your motherboard, you can control all of that addressable RGB. So you can connect up to six ARGB devices, and you can even link them to each other to get even more connected to this hub, and control them with only a single um, three-pin, five-volt ARGB header that you would connect to the J Rainbow port on the motherboard. So basically, it's a splitter, to, to yeah, answer the question. Yeah, basically, it's like, a, like an RGB hub. Yes. Then let's talk a little bit more, more about the Insta Light Loop button, because this one is located mm. on the front of the case. So when I yanked off the front panel, you could <laughs> see a small cable uh, being yeah, connected. There we go. And that is connected to this button. This is the Insta Light Loop button. And if you press this, you will cycle through a lot of different uh, light effects that the case supports. But also if you long press this, and later on I will demonstrate this if, if we uh, build a PC into it, you can also sync it to the motherboard. And then based on the kind of effect that the motherboard is doing, um, it will also synchronize with the rest of the RGB. So if you have more RGB components, you can connect everything together and for example also control it through uh, Mystic Light RGB lighting within MSI Center. This is also specifically for the M100R. The M100A actually has this button, but it will not function because it will also not have that uh, specialized 1 to 6 ARGB uh, PCB on the back of the motherboard tray. Another thing that is included with the M100R model is the 1 to 4 fan cable. And this is actually a very neat little cable. I'll show you right here. So it comes with one connector that you connect to your motherboard and then you get four connectors out of it and you can actually connect all the uh, fans that are already in the case to this and you would need only one header on your motherboard to power all of them so this is also something that we're going to use later um, it will look a lot more neat on the front of your motherboard also not all motherboards have that many fan headers yeah um, so if you're limited on fan headers this a cable like this can help you a lot but I mean, like you said, right, that's going to save a lot of cables sticking out of your yeah. motherboard as well. So it will make things look a, a lot neater, especially uh, because you've got a tempered glass. So you, you want to go for neat. You, you want to prevent yeah. as much, uh, well, do as much cable management as you can. Yeah, and the nice thing about this is also that the, uh, the four connections from the fan, well, you can actually keep all of them behind the motherboard tray. So mm. out of sight. Yeah. Um, and you will only have one cable to the front to connect to your motherboard. So that's the only cable you'll be able to see if you look uh, through the tempered glass. I mean, to be now. fair, you are going to lose the ability probably to, to steer those fans uh, individually. That's but correct. Again, you will, you will con um, steer yeah. them in the same way. At the same them. time. Yeah. But, but I was going to say, uh, really, uh, if you think practically, I don't really have any uh, scenarios where you want to do those all individually. Usually, you either want them to respond to a rise in temperature or not, and then yeah. probably you want them all to respond at the same time to increase airflow. Yeah, in most situations, indeed. Yeah, um, makes the most sense. Something that you could consider is, for example, if you want to steer the front three and the rear one individually, mm -hmm. then you could connect the, the three in the front to, the, uh, to this cable and connect yeah. that one on your motherboard and the rear one to a separate header, so you can control the front and the rear separately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Peter already mentioned, in most situations... Um, it's, it's more than good enough just to, to, to create that together. airflow, uh, that, that wind tunnel effect, let's say, through the case. So if they all do it at the same time, that's exactly what you'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luke Harding is asking, any options for a solid non-glass slash acrylic side panel? No, not for this specific model. Um, including two side panels would at this price point yeah. have quite a big um, also increase the cost effect quite on the a price bit. yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack Ryers asking is it available in white color not at this point but never say never no. I mean as you saw the other PC that Mike pulled up was also uh, that was know. a white one exactly so we, we are 
uh, creating some of these models in, in yeah. white color, but it, it's really on a case by case, literally, uh, pun intended, uh, <laughs> on a case by case <laughs> basis. So, yeah. Yeah, and also the, the demand for black cases is still a lot higher than yeah. for white ones. Um, so we cannot release all models that we have in black in a white model as well. Hmm. Silent Shadow, got to check the capacity of the motherboard header against the fan current draw to be sure you don't overload it. Best to use a PWM fan hub. Um, yeah, I most recent motherboards um, are powerful enough. Yeah. You can indeed use a separate hub. Um, but yeah, uh, on the motherboard we're using today, it's not an issue at all to power all four of them off a single I, header. I don't even know how many fans you'd need to connect to really overload. I guess it's po it's feasible, but it, it also yeah. depends very much on the fan. You have these yeah. very high power fans, for example, that are being used in in servers. I was going to say server fans. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, actually, they they do pull more power. Yeah. And if you would use a bunch of those fans and connect all of them to a single header, um, then that could become an issue. Yes. Asian Phantom S uh, usually can handle four fa fans per header. Uh, yeah, recent motherboards can indeed older ones not always. More recent motherboards can indeed do that. Are all of the fans that are in the case PWM? Uh, I don't think they are PWM. No, they're all three pin fans. Okay, yep. let's continue. Let's go. Uh, the front IO connectivity. And let me. Saw somebody asking about this earlier as well. Show yes. you the front of the case right here. There we go. As you can see, it comes with. Three USB ports here. This one is a USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1 USB port. These are USB 2.0 ports. Uh, it comes with two jack connectors for uh, microphone and um, headphones, headphones yes. so, or one headset. Then you have your status LEDs, a reset button, um, a power button right here, and of course the install loop button that we've talked about before. This is identical for both models, but as I mentioned before, um, this button will only work if you have the M100R model because you need that 1 to 6 ARGB hub inside the case for it in order to work. Action Brother is saying, hmm, no USB-C port in 2022. No, all has to do with the price point yeah. of this case. You could do that, but then it, it becomes a different yeah. price point. So again, what the goal for this case was to hit a certain price point. So then you have to make certain choices. Yeah. Um, if you want USB-C, we've, we've got plenty of other cases that do have that. I and I'm not ruling out that we, for example, yep. will have um, a, like a higher end version in micro ATX as well in the future. Yep. I don't know. Um, but but it, those will be a bit of a different price point, uh, the ones yes. that, that have it. Uh, and probably, I mean, most motherboards will have a USB-C port on the back these days. So if you really need one, there's probably going to be one on, on the back of your motherboard. But also, yeah. it depends also very much on the motherboard you're using, whether yeah. or not it has a front USB header. The model that we're using today does have one. Um, but I think many people in this case will also go for an even more affordable motherboard that do not always have this mm. Type-C header. Um, but yeah, it would definitely have uh, an impact on the price as well yes. if you would include um, yeah. USB-C here. Yeah. So if that's really a requirement for you, then yeah, we, we have other cases that do have that. But yep. again, they will probably be a little bit higher in price exactly. because it's more expensive, simple as that, to have USB-C ports. Let's go to yes. a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the MAG Forge M100R and the uh, MAG Forge <coughs> M100A. So you can have a quick glance of what will be the right model for you. Um, as mentioned, tempered glass side panel, specifically M100R. The M100A still comes with a window, but it's an acrylic side panel. So you can still watch the internals, yep. um, but basically it's made out of acrylic material, like basically a type of translucent plastic, yes. whereas the M100R really has a tempered glass side panel. Addressable RGB is also specifically a feature for the M100R. The M100A comes with auto RGB fans that are connected through Molex, so these cannot be controlled, for example, through the motherboard with a addressable RGB header. Um, in terms of fans, they both come with four fans, uh, three in the front, one in the rear. Um, the difference in the fans here again is the, the uh, RGB lighting. And the M100R has two additional features compared to the M100A, which is the 1 to 6 uh, LED control hub 
behind the motherboard tray and a 1 to 4 fan cable is included in the box which is not included with the M100A. Quick overview of all the specifications, I'm not going to repeat all of them, most we've already talked about, so if you want you can quickly take a screenshot, and, uh, yeah. but you can also go to our product pages, they're yeah. already live for both models, um, so you can see all the details of these specific cases. Uh, Glenn is asking on Facebook, oh the new M100R, mi new micro ATX case, yes it is. Yep. Then, price and availability. Actually, in certain regions, both models are already available. Um, there you go. Cases are usually, we ship them overseas, so there can be quite a difference yep. in different regions when these cases expect. So this can also be quite different uh, when it becomes available in region A and when it becomes available in region B. So best to check with your local reseller to get more detailed availability. Yeah. Also, price can differ a bit. You have different VATs, for example, in different countries. Yeah. Um, but the MSRP in US dollar for the Forge M100A is 49 US dollar, and that's indeed including the fence. Edwin K is asking if fence included. Yes. Um, and for the M100R, so the model with tempered glass and addressable RGB lighting, it's 59 US dollar. Yep. Um, in euros, including VAT, that's 49 euros for the M100A and 59 euros for the M100R. Yep. So as you can see, the the price point of these cases, you have to make certain concessions. So yeah. if you would do dust filters in the front, if you would do front USB Type-C and have all of them USB 3.2, for example, yeah. all of those things would have an influence on the price. Yeah. Um, and in order to get this on the market at a very affordable price, um, we decided, of course, to do some concessions. Um, but I think that the balance is really nice in what it, what it still offers and the price point we're able to reach with this. Yeah. But I mean, the, the same thing you mentioned earlier as well is that you know they're shipping out by sea by container, yep. uh, not by air. This is also again something to uh, make sure that the price doesn't go up more than than necessary. Because if you yep. would ship them by air freight, uh, that's more expensive. So of course you'd have to cover the cost. So that would in, impact the price. So it all basically is geared towards uh, uh, providing a, a you know a, a really good case. Um, with some some balance here and there, but still uh, for a certain price. And as you can see, I mean, for this price, I see a lot of people in the chat also saying that's the perfect price, and they're quite impressed with the price. Uh, indeed, how low it is with everything included. Um, so yeah, he is saying three front fans are included. Yes, and one rear fan. So also, if you take a look at the price for separate fans, if you would do that times four, yeah, you already get four fans included with this case. Yeah. Action Brother is saying um, because <coughs> the USB C port versus USB Type A is at max five euros. Five euros on this case is almost ten percent. Yeah. Um, actually, for the M100A, that is over ten percent. Yes. So that's quite a quite a big increase. Yeah. Um, and especially because not everyone is already using that, it's not a useful addition for everyone. Um, of course, we have plenty of cases with USB Type-C, but usually they do come at a different price point. Okay. So at this price point, it's really a balancing act about what, what are you going to include and what are you excluding. And we hope mm -hmm. we made the right choices. Please let us know if you think we spend too much money and effort in certain aspects. It's, and it's an interesting question from, from Fly and Shadow. I'm wondering this as well, just you know, like general interest. Uh, why do we never see a mesh side panel? on a case, and would that even make sense? A mesh side panel on a case in terms of... I mean, it would be almost similar to just leaving the side panel off to an extent. You I can guess. do it. There, there are actually cases in the market that are completely made out of mesh. Uh, for yep. example, as many of you will maybe know, I'm very much a mini ITX enthusiast, so I <laughs> like to build in very compact cases. Maybe some of you are uh, familiar with uh, Meshlicious, it's called. It's a mini ITX case made completely out of mesh. Um, of course, for airflow, that's really nice because it can yep. breathe in all directions, basically. The downsides of it is they're more loud. It's more open, so nothing is blocking the sound. For example, a tempered glass side panel, it does not breathe, but it does block out sound. Yep. Um, and another downside is, of course, dust if you're going full mesh. So it is a trade-off. Yes, you can go full mesh. Um, it is possible. Um, but yeah, there, there are a few trade-offs. Also, if you would make a mesh panel 
on the side on a bigger case like well micro ATX is well, still like quite this, compact yeah. but compared to mini ATX yeah. it's it's a lot bigger it's a lot more fragile than when you have tempered glass or uh, a steel side panel hmm. so it, it's very easy especially if you have like a, a larger surface it's easier to to bump it for example and also i'm really wondering if it would make that much difference in terms of airflow in in specifically for example in this case as an example because you've already got pretty good airflow especially if you're using the fans correctly um yeah it would probably make some difference but it it probably would not be huge no it, it so maybe a couple of a degrees difference indeed but yeah, yeah we really try to get like an optimized airflow balanced yeah. with noise levels yeah. um, so by creating the correct type of wind tunnel effect that you're basically doing by having the intake yes. in the front and the outtake at the rear yeah. and maybe also the front if you position fans there um, that way you can still circulate air quite efficiently through the case but still maintaining proper noise levels yeah. um, Dragonema is asking, will there be a non-RGB version? No plans at, at this point, but that could, for example, be a trade-off that you do. Like if maybe in the future, we could, for example, do a USB Type-C model, but exclude the ARGB. That would, of course... Either that or like a uh, um, non-RGB model, uh, like regular fans, no RGB built in and a, a solid side panel. Yeah. Could be. Could be indeed. Yeah. So... Let us know what your preferences are. Yeah. If you think we made the right choices or not. Uh, Aksai, uh, that's a question for you, <laughs> I think, Peter. 6600 versus 3060, which is best? Depends on what you want. Uh, both are good, to be fair. Uh, but it really depends on what you're trying to do with it, which games you're going to play, uh, if you prefer, if the games you play uh, use DLSS or uh, FSR, um, you know, both are pretty good. Um, yeah, depends, I would say on, depends on the deal you can get for for each yeah. of those cards as well. I guess you know if if one of them is 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 uh, available in a better deal, like a lower price, then probably go for that one. But you know both of them are good choices. I I don't think there's a bad choice between those two. Yeah, I mean I I know that's probably not the answer you were waiting or hoping for, but both are pretty good cards. Yeah. 600 and, and 3060, uh, yeah, both are pretty good graphics cards. Should be pretty good um, value for money as well uh, at the current prices, I would say. Yeah. But yeah. So today we're using uh, 6600 XT. I believe, like, yes. in, in terms of raw performance, it's slightly faster than the 3060, I believe. Um, but for example, 3060 gives you a bit better ray tracing performance, yeah. gives you DLSS. So yeah. it's all about what you want. It's a bit of a trade off, indeed. Yeah. yeah. So also that's why I said it depends on the games yeah. you're, you're playing as well. If you play games that, that use ray tracing, probably the 3060 is a little bit of a better choice. Uh, DLSS is, is still just a bit ahead of the, especially uh, coming to FSR 2.0, which is already catching up quite a bit. But yeah, it's, yeah. And then still, I mean, Action Brother is also saying that indeed. I mean, DLSS, it's not the holy grail because there are some sometimes especially in games that have a bit fast movement you can still get some artifacts you can still get some ghosting um so yeah it really depends uh dragon name is asking is there a product page for this yes the product pages yeah. of both these cases are already live so you can find all the details right there uh silent shadow is asking 3060 12 gigabyte <laughs> or 3060 ti 8 gigabyte like and basically all cases 360 ti is faster yes. but more expensive yeah but i i would go for that because at the moment you don't need 12 gigs of vram Dep like depends on the situation but it's very rare well if you're yeah. if you're looking at a 3060 or a 3060 ti you let then i it's probably safe to assume you're not going to be playing at 4k usually you're Correct. bottlenecking your gpu earlier yes then in you're that segment then so the, the hard, higher amounts of VRAM only make sense if either you're modding the crap out of some games, but assuming you're playing either at 1080p or 1440p, uh, 8 gigs of VRAM is probably enough. Yes. Uh, so only at higher resolutions can it start to make sense uh, to have higher amounts of VRAM. Uh, so in this case, I would go for uh, anywhere up to... Uh, 4040p, for example, I would go for 3060 Ti because it just gives you a bit more raw performance 
versus a 3060. Um, before we highlight some of the components that we'll be using today for this build, maybe let's pick our first winner for today. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, by the way, if I cough every now and again. So if you haven't participated, make sure to do so. Go yes. to msr.com slash two slash insider. If you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow the direct link that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. Yes. Within Gleam, you can perform certain actions. The more actions you perform, the bigger chance you'll have to win. And also, if you're a returning visitor, make sure to also claim your loyalty bonus to have a slight edge in the giveaway. Yes, and we have our first winner. And their name is Y Red Panda. Congratulations. Congratulations. You won a game code for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and uh, a code for the DLC Dawn of Ragnarok. Exactly. Both of them will be coming your way very soon. Yes. So congratulations. There will be more winners. Oh, yeah, they're responding. Nice. Good to see you in the chat, Y Red Panda. Congrats again. Um, congratulations. Yeah, and there will be more, more game codes to give away later on this stream. So uh, if you want a chance to win, don't, uh, don't, don't be disappointed. Don't be... Uh, Disparaged, you will Don't have plenty angry. of time to win. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's good to see, right? Why Red Panda say, first thing I've ever won. <laughs> That's always nice. Good Congrats to see, again. Good to see. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put this to the side for now. Uh, no, sorry, Higlot. It was on uh, uh, Twitch. But that, it doesn't matter. I mean, the, uh, the winners can be picked from uh, no matter what platform you're watching. As long as you, as you sign up to the giveaway and you, you manage to find the link, then it's all fine. Yeah. Before we start building, I would like to highlight some of the components that we're, we're using today, because of course we're not only using the case, but we also need stuff to put into the case. Yes. Let's start off with the motherboard. Boom. So this is uh, the MAG B660M Mortar Max Wi-Fi DDR4. It comes with a 1260 amp Dr. Moss for the VRM. It's underneath these heat sinks. Um, it has an extended heatsink design, so as you can see, it stretches all the way over the I.O. to get a bigger surface area for more efficient heat dissipation of uh, those power stages. Um, the cool thing about this specific model, and it's actually our only B660 model that has this feature, is uh, this little chip right here. And this is o the OC engine, so basically it's an external clock generator, allowing you to adjust the base clock of the CPU. So you can even overclock non-K CPUs on this motherboard. Um, then you're not overclocking them through increasing the multiplier because of course a non-K CPU cannot do that. Um, but by increasing the base clock you can still reach higher clock frequencies. So if you want to know more about this, we had a dedicated live stream about this also with some demonstrations um, while overclocking the Core i5-12400 CPU. Um, it also comes with PCI Express Gen 5 because of that external clock generator. That's also a feature that other B660 boards do not have. On the I.O. you'll find both 2.5 gigabit LAN and uh, Wi-Fi 6E. It has dual M.2 and both are equipped with M.2 Shield Frozer. It also comes with lighting USB 20G. That's the Type-C port right there. And it has a pre-installed I.O. shield. Pretty nice. Yes. Then let's continue Will with... Will you use uh, this motherboard to OC 12400 in this stream? Yeah, I'm not sure if we'll get to that. No, it will take too much time for now. Yeah. And we actually already did a dedicated live stream about this. So yeah. if you're interested in overclocking a 12400 on this motherboard, make sure to check out one of our previous yeah. live streams. Uh, because if we do that today, we wouldn't be able to play It Takes Two anymore. Yeah, exactly. Then and let's go we would do that. to our next product. So as I mentioned, um, today we're also going with the Intel Core i5-12400 CPU. Yes. Six core processor. All of them are P cores, so the performance cores, really nice uh, for gaming. And it's also quite an affordable model. Um, that's also why we're using it today, because we don't want to make the highest end system. We do really want to make a bang for buck system. And I believe this is one of the best processors to get at that price point. And we're going to cool it with this all-in-one liquid cooler right here. And this is the MAG Core Liquid C240. Comes with some nice uh, addressable RGB lighting in both the two 100 millimeter fans and um, the CPU block right here. Um, it also has evaporation proof tubing, comes with dual ball bearing fans um, and has a radiator pump design. So the pump is actually located within the radiator but because it's actually in the dead spot behind the fan, 
it doesn't obstruct any airflow of the fan through the radiator. So that's today's liquid cooler. Yes. And then, last but not least, we have the graphics card. Da, 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 da. Boom. Peter, it's all yours. You're the graphics card man. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> but uh, you caught me off guard. No, it's, uh, yeah, so this is, I believe, the uh, uh, Radeon RX 6600 XT Gaming X, I believe. Yes, that's uh, the X8G, right? Yeah. It's got eight gigs of memory, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, this is the the, the twin frozer uh, uh, graphics card, uh, twin frozer eight. So I meaning it has right. two fans. Yeah, meaning it has two fans. Either uh, I, uh, if it had three fans, it would be called tri frozer or gaming trio. Uh, but yes, yeah, so this is the gaming card uh, with uh, the dual fans. It's got a Torx fan 4.0. So those are uh, you can recognize them by being linked together, uh, two yeah. two blades linked together with an outer link. Yeah, indeed. So that pushes more uh, air into the heatsink. The heatsink below, you can also see there's like a wave, uh, yeah, on, on the cutting edge of the of those uh, blades of those um, uh, of the heatsink of the uh, aluminum. So you can uh, see a little bit through in, there. In between the fans, indeed, in between the fan blades, you can see that. That's a kind of to to stop the airflow, uh, or at least you know, lead it down in a more organized fashion, so you don't get uh, the whoosh noise. Which, uh, you know, if you don't have that, it, it will cause more tur turbulence, which is what you will perceive or hear as, uh, yeah, as noise, as wind noise. So basically everything geared towards both uh, optimizing airflow um, and, uh, yeah, the cooling and, and giving less noise. There's actually the some back, more cooling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the back you'll see a nice back plate there um, with, uh, I think it's metal, right? Yeah, it's a metal back plate. Yeah, metal back plate. Um, and as you can see, it's got what we call a flow-through design. So that means that part of the back plate, the PCB is actually a bit shorter than the card itself. You can see that the see, PCB yeah. ends where uh, where the power connector is located. Oh, yeah, or there. Yeah, oh, that's on the other side, the underside of the card. Yeah, here you also see it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which means that there's a, a bit of the card that's actually all heatsink um, and will let air uh, flow through it basically. So right out the top of the card uh, into so basically the top of the right case and there. then very easy to exit out of the, 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 the PC, the case again. So very efficient uh, airflow design uh, and cooling design. It has uh, some RGB on the side. So that's the side that you are going to see in the MSI logo there indeed. Yeah. Uh, and it also has, maybe nice to show on the uh, side of the I.O. bracket there, it's uh, uh, anti-bending measures. Oh, right. Not that this card is very heavy, mm, but still, part. pretty much all of our cards have that these days, um, indeed. That's an anti-bending bracket, so it's a bit thicker than the uh, yeah the other metals you're uh, you'll able to find on the rest of the card, and that's really uh, it, it's screwed in at various points uh, of the card and really helps the card you know the, the, the build down. quality of the card be w way more solid, um, and just prevents any kind of sagging or bending. Um, so yeah, that really helps with um, that uh, prevent any kind of issues. Three times display port. One HDMI port. Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty standard these days. Yeah. As you can see, the, uh, the 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 well, the length of the card isn't very long, so it's it, because it has two fans. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure the exact length, but it's not very long. The the thickness of the card is, I believe, like two and a half slots, right? Yeah, mm, it's two point three more than maybe. Two slots. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, for all intents and purposes, it's it takes two and a half slots pretty much um, of space, which is also you know pretty normal. And, and in this case, uh, in this build, we're going to have plenty of space in that direction. So. Not a problem whatsoever. So yeah, very nice, uh, very solid card as well for this build to choose. Yes. Um, before we continue, I don't have any more slides. I'm going to put my notebook Ooh. to the side to create some space right here. Yeah, you need all the space you can get. <clears throat> yes. Um, before I'm going to put stuff into the case, I always start with preparing the motherboard because now you can easily reach everything. Uh, once it's in the case, it's way harder to put everything in and on the motherboard. So I'm going to grab my CPU, I'm going to grab the SSD. Let's see if we can get a good view. Ah, here yeah. we go. Yep. Memory modules. Then <coughs> I have this bracket right here. And this is the mount for the liquid cooler. So that's how we put the block on the CPU. Um, we're already going to prepare this because th we need to put a backplate behind um, the motherboard. Um, of course, we need this. Some thermal paste to put on the CPU. So let's start with the CPU. Um, 
I'm going to turn this around so it's a little bit... I hope you can still <laughs> see it properly. Let me move a little bit to your side. There we go. So there is always a cap on um, uh, the CPU socket by default, that's to protect the pins inside here. It's an LGA CPU, meaning the pins are in the socket and not on the CPU. Yep. Always keep this on when you're going to install the CPU. So don't pull it off first, just open it up. Then you grab the CPU, carefully put it inside the socket. There's a little mark on the socket and the CPU, I think to, to show you how it's supposed to be entered yep. in there, right? Yeah, with um, these uh, Intel CPUs, it's actually very easy because if you read the text like this, in that direction you put it in. Yep. Now that the, uh, basically the CPU is now protecting the pins, so now you can actually remove um, the protective plate. Doesn't it like there pop off if you just push down the bracket? Yeah, you may break the sides off ah, if you okay. do that. Uh, you, you can do it because well, in theory you don't need it anymore. Um, but yeah, I always pull it off like this, because right mm. now the CPU is already protecting those yep. pins, yep. even if it's not closed yet. Um, but always put in your CPU first. Yep. Then it's very easy, just close the lid, and the CPU is installed, that's it. Um, then our memory modules. This motherboard has four memory DIMMs. Always make sure to install them in the right slot. So in this situation, you can actually read it on the print on the motherboard, right here. Yes, yeah. So you see you have to fill the outer modules first and you always keep one in between. So you skip the first one. Hello, camera. Mm. Yes, takes a while. <laughs> mm. yes, yes, that works. So you skip the first one, we're going to fill the second one and we skip the third one and we're going to fill up the fourth one. Always take a good look at where the incline is, how you put, have to put it in there. So you put it in on both sides and then until you hear a click, and then it's properly in there. The memory modules we're using today are the G-Scale Trident Z modules. We're using two times eight gigabytes, so six gigabytes in total. I know for today's standards, it's definitely not the maximum you can get, but hmm. to keep it like a, a little bit of an affordable system. Yeah. Uh, for gaming, 16 gigabytes is plenty. Um, and this is DDR4 3600 megahertz. So and it kind of fits with, I mean, the, the case is also in the more affordable category, so yeah. it does fit that theme. Indeed. Um, then we're going to install the SSD. We're going to use a single SSD today. Our SSD that we're using is completely overkill because <laughs> we're using MSI Spatium uh, M480 2 terabytes Gen 4 SSD. Um, these are maybe not as affordable as the rest of the components, <laughs> but you can also get them in smaller capacities. And then of course, they're way more affordable than the no. 2 terabyte model. Um, but we just already had a Windows installation yeah, on this one yeah. and we were too lazy to install another or you, one. Or you can so get that's a why Gen, we're using the two terabyte one. Or you can get a Gen 3 one if you... You can I get mean, a Gen 3 one will be a little bit cheaper yeah. if you don't need the, the utmost speed. But indeed. I mean, it's a shame you got Gen 4 on yeah, this board. Yeah, it's Gen so 4 on this board, CPU can support it. Exactly. So, so why not use um, it? But I think what's the smallest capacity is 512 gigabytes? Oh, it really depends on the region as well. But ah, yeah, okay. in general, that's usually uh, one of the smaller ones. Um, and it depends per model. Uh, I mean, some of them are available even as low as, I believe, 256 gigs. Um, but yeah, it, again, it really depends. If you're just going to use it for like a boot drive or something, then indeed you don't need uh, that much capacity. Um. See, any thoughts on the recent controversy over 12th gen uh, mounting, mounting pressure? pressure. Mm. These liquid coolers were actually uh, launched together with uh, 12th gen, so they were already tested on 12th gen. Uh, it's mostly like the older liquid coolers that sometimes had issues with mounting pressure in um, the wrong place of the CPU. Um, but I definitely haven't experienced any issues with, with these liquid coolers. So the C-series and the P-series as well. Also, these by default come with uh, LGA 1700 bracket out of the box. Yeah. Um, talking about the bracket, that's the next thing we're going to install. Uh, Rio is saying, try the camera from above so you can see when installing a processor. We, we've tried that in the past. It's very difficult to get right uh, in our setup. Um, and also, very often, we'll be leaning over the product, actually, to, to yeah. you know, to, to 
make sure we do things right to, to get a good view of it ourselves, which will block your view. So this is actually uh, a, a, probably a better view. Yes, it's a little bit um, of a different view, but it should still be fine. I think you should should still be able to see what Mikhail is doing, right? Yeah. Um, Rayo is asking, why don't you remove the retail cover on the SSD? So I think you mean the sticker? It's actually a special sticker, right, Peter? Uh, no, no, I think in our case it isn't. Uh, some no? SSDs need, do, do have special stickers or claim they have special stickers which actually um, uh, provide, what is it, conductivity, heat conductivity, uh, that there's some kind of metal, very thin metal layer involved there, uh, which may or may not, may not be true. Um, in our case, we've tested it actually both with and without the sticker. Uh, the sticker is actually very thin and it doesn't have any meaningful effect on the temperatures. So I'm now installing the backplate for the CPU cooler. So you just put it on the back of the motherboard. So that's why we didn't, and I mean, if you're going to remove that sticker, you can do that, but that might in influence your, your warranty if you, if you at some point want to return it or anything like that, because you, you're usually just, a, uh, you're supposed to leave them on there. No. So there's no benefit and there's really no reason to take it off unless you, you want to, I don't know, water cool your SSD or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you want to do some, some crazy stuff like that then. You can do it, but. Okay, so now the motherboard is basically all prepared. So we have installed um, the backplate right there of the CPU cooler. Yep. You will see the screws sticking out here. That's where we will put, later on we'll put this on the uh, CPU block and that will go over this and we'll screw it on. But that's when it's mounted inside the case. We've installed the CPU, of course, memory modules and SSD underneath the primary. And a two slot with the heatsink. Yes. Um, now let's put this to the side and this as well, create some space. And go back to the case. This also what's nice about smaller cases, they're a lot lighter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now that we don't have Ja anymore, we, we, we need to get more into that light category, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're not as... Uh, ja was doing all the heavy lifting uh, Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, while you do this, by the way, shall I draw another winner? That's a good idea. Yeah. While you do that, I will talk a little bit about this power supply. All right. Because um, today we're using the uh, MAG uh, A650BN. Um, the A in the name basically stands for the fact that it's an ATX power supply. So most micro ATX cases use ATX power supplies, smaller mini ITX sometimes also use SFX power supplies. Um, the model I'm using right now is a more affordable model, 650 watts, so plenty for the build we're using today. So we're going for the Core i5-12400 together with um, an RX 6600 XT graphics card, so you can easily feed that of a 650 watt power supply. Um, this is a non-modular power supply, meaning the cables are attached to the power supply, you cannot remove them. This, of course, can make cable management a bit more difficult. So if you do want uh, a modular power supply, you can, for example, take a look at our MPG series. Um, those are, of course, a little bit more expensive, but they're 80 plus gold, whereas this model is 80 plus bronze, and it comes with detachable cables. So it's really up to you what you want. If you only put it in once and manage the cables um, and don't look at it again, then it may be fine. If you make changes more often, a modular power supply may be worth investing in. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really uh, up to you. But I'm going for the more affordable option today, also because of the price point of the case. Yes, and we have our next winner, and their name is Jiaming. Jiaming, congratulations. We are also going to send the uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla Game Key plus Dawn of Ragnarok DLC to you uh, after the stream. So hope you enjoy it. For everybody else who still wants a chance of winning it, please uh, make sure you register on the Gleam, Gleam link uh, or you go to msidercom slash 2 slash insider. Uh, on the Gleam platform, you can perform a couple of actions and then uh, the more actions you perform, the more points you have. If you're a regular viewer, please make sure that you apply your loyalty bonus points. You can do that each and every single live stream. They keep adding up, so it's not like, you know, if you spend them once, they're gone. Um, and yeah, that will just increase your chances of winning. And um, yeah, we'll have more winners later on this live stream. 
So screwing in a power supply, definitely not rocket science. It's just you put it in there. I put the fan to the bottom because that's also where we have our dust filter and we have um, proper ventilation on the bottom so it can pull fresh air from there. There we go. Yeah, I was thinking the same actually, Mr. Macedox. Ja Ming, it, it, it did sound a little bit suspicious, but I mean, I don't think Ja, well, actually, since he doesn't work for MSI anymore, he is actually <laughs> now eligible to win. Because if you're working for MSI, you're not eligible, but I, I don't think it's them. Um, let's take a look at the back here. Yes. So, four screws, and it's in there. Right now you see a lot of cable clutter, of course, being a non-modular power supply, all the cables are here. Later on, I will put them a little bit in there. I'm not going to do very extensive cable management because that will take too much time. So I'm not going to use tie wraps and stuff like that. Yep. Um, we're going the quick and dirty way today. Hmm. Yes. Um, um, yeah, Swizzler, I, I did see your question. Uh, it was a, a very specific RMA question about your product. Unfortunately, I mean, we're not from the RMA department. We don't have access to, to any records. We can't say anything about, you know, how long any certain RMA will, will take. Um, I mean, it's very unfortunate you're, you had to RMA it at all, um, and I hope it, it will return quickly. But I, I can't give you any meaningful answers uh, on, on any RMA questions. Sorry. I see a question from Starview89. Um, which platform is the PSU built on? It's based on the CWT platform. Yes, it is. So just like our MPG power supply series, also our MAG models, um, CWT is the OEM that makes them. <laughs> Looking at all those cables sticking out of the back gives me a headache. Yeah, well, that's why they are in a place where in the end you won't have to look at them anymore. Yeah. But yeah, indeed, building a PC at this price point, it comes with certain concessions. Yep. One of them being, I'm going for a cheaper option for the power supply, meaning it's not a modular one. Yes, modular ones are definitely more handy, but also more expensive. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's how important is it to you? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Is it worth the extra money to go for the modular one? Um, so the power supply is in here now. Now I'm going to put in the motherboard um, and then I will route the cables from the power supply to the motherboard because now it's still easy to access everything. Later on, I will also show you from a top view, but now I need both hands. Huh. Um, and then I will also show you how it is positioned. Well, we can, where the screw yeah, it's probably, yeah, you can't really see anything from here. Now let me quickly grab this camera. Let's see if it still works. Yes. It actually is? It, nice. It, I think it does. Yes. So this is how you see it within the case. And it's properly aligned with the screw, so screw holes. So I'm going to screw this in in a minute. Yeah. And then the I.O. is nicely aligned. Yeah, there we yeah. go. So pre-installed I.O. shield, so I didn't have to put it in the case first. If you are using a motherboard, um, and especially the more affordable motherboards, they don't always have this, then make sure to put in the I.O. shield first before you put in the motherboard. Yeah, you, you wouldn't be the first one. It's happened to us as well. Uh, it's happened to everyone. In, in the past, exactly, <laughs> yeah. That you put everything in, you, you, you close the PC up even, and then you went, oh, no. I, uh, <laughs> and I, I think most of us, even if, if like at that point, you've pretty much put the PC together all, all over again, I think I... I also w won't be the only one that probably considered you know what L i'll just friggin skip it who needs an io shield anyway <laughs> and that's how you get a lot of dust in your case oh yes <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i mean it does have its uses but it's so annoying if, if that's like the the one thing you forgot so now just screwing in the motherboard <laughs> Rule number one, never close the case. Yeah, that's also indeed one of the um, go-to things I, I also always say. Like, until it, you actually verify that it works, just leave the sides off and, and boot it up once you've put it together. If everything works, all right, then, you know, cover it up, put, put the covers back on. I like to live on the edge. I'm just going you, to close yeah, it first do. and see that's if right. it works. <laughs> you can always open it back up. <laughs> But yeah, indeed, it is, it is the better yeah. order to check first and then close it. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
I would love for a, a PC build, like an, uh, you know, uh, as we call them, uh, system integrator or, you know, like a, a PC build company to be called YOLO and just put <laughs> stuff together and not even test it, just send it out. <laughs> Mr. Masterdog says, Mike is confident. Now mm. I still am, but let's see if it works. <laughs> no, I, I, I think you may have forgotten Maybe you the word it. over, <laughs> overconfident, that might be. I've built uh, my Lon fair share Lon Dog of was PCs. asking what motherboards will fit in this case. So uh, Mike showed it earlier in yep. this uh, live stream as well. That micro ATX and mini ATX. Micro ATX, ATX and mini ATX. And we're using micro ATX today. So let's That's maybe the go one. with the few. Yep, here we go. So you can see that this basically takes up all the space you have available. If you go for mini ITX, it will be a little bit smaller right yes. here, and it will only have one expansion slot, so only the PCI yeah. Express slot. Yes. Okay. Um, motherboard is installed. Better, better late than never. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, CJ Bill. Yes. Um, no. Before we're going to install the graphics card and the liquid cooler, now the motherboard is still quite properly accessible. So I'm already going to route some cables and plug them in. One of them being the 24 pin ATX plug. So let me just pull it to the front. Does the case have a motherboard standoff to secure it in place? I think you mean there are indeed uh, the standoffs stand in between the, the, the motherboard tray and the motherboard? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, some are pre-installed and there are some extra in the box, so based on your motherboard you can put the right ones in. Yeah. Um, so we put the 24 ATX to the front, then I have an 8-pin CPU power connector. I'm going to pull that to the corner right here where the connector is. And then we have our USB 3.2 connector. Jack Ryder is asking, does the radiator cool the CPU more than the box fan? So I'm assuming you mean the... If, does the, if the performance of the liquid cooler is better yeah, than the... than the box, like the, the one that's included with uh, yes. the huge, CPU. Yes, huge difference between the box cooler and a 240 millimeter radiator. There should be. Yeah. If, if there isn't, then something is very wrong with the installation of your liquid cooler. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, to take a seat. And then we have all these nice small cables right here. Oh. here and we. these are actually for <coughs> the power button, the reset button, the HDD LED and the power LED. Yeah, Mike, for, for, for noobs like me, yeah. you, you need to put in a good word in, uh, to, towards our HQ to see if we can make like a, a standard adapter or something that you can put those pins into that you know you can just put them onto the motherboard in one go instead of having to mess around with those tiny tiny little connectors and trying to find out where they go for the for for the you know the, the power reset uh, hdd lights and, and so you um, will want to have that included with the motherboard i guess maybe yeah now yeah, we can talk about that or just for, for you know if i ever have to do it on live stream again just one for me <laughs> <laughs> And Maybe somebody can, can 3D print it or something. No, but I mean, that's, I think, you know, for a lot of people that would make that just so much easier. I see a lot of people, yeah, the AZ and Venom as well. I agree. Uh, I hate this part. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those, you know, you, you don't have to do it that many times unless you're assembling PCs for a living. But it's just, any time you have to do it is, is one time too many. It's like, <laughs> ah, to, ah, come on. <laughs> Yeah, they're not your favorite connectors. Yeah, these jumpers. Yeah, I see. I see too many people now. <laughs> yep, I agree. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so hey, you know. Good suggestion. Good suggestion. Yeah. So I'm going to put some of the cables that I won't be using <laughs> away, basically behind the power supply. Okay. And Oh, Landog is saying uh, they they think they actually saw an adapter plug for for those motherboard connectors, um, which actually is not a bad idea. If somebody could make like an actual little adapter for it, that would allow you to just put it in there. That probably some people will think it's worth it. Oh, actually, IT says they might have one there. 
So, the, like, maybe we actually had some of those in the past? Yeah, I think, like, but that's a long time ago. But I yeah. think they, they did exist in the past. I actually don't know why they disappeared. That's actually before I joined MSI, they were already gone. So, let me find out if there's a specific probably reason they, why they're not at Probably they anymore. thought that, well, you know, after doing it for a generation or two, they thought, well, everybody has one now, so, you know, <laughs> we can stop. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, I think... Um, but like the pinout has been the same for a long time, so I would assume that they yeah. would still work for. If you have them, or if you can find them, but still. But yeah, I do remember uh, indeed they were there in the past. So I, I don't really know why they why they disappeared. Good Probably question. cost, because you know, it, it, again, if you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're you want to focus on on your motherboard, you know, this is one of those things that if you mention on the. But then it still should be included with uh, more high-end models. I agree. In my I agree. Opinion. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, here's the thing, right? If if it was. This is one of these things that you can mention it on, on the website or on, on the data sheet or anything like that. But people are probably not going to care. They care more about, you know, what, what connectors does it have? Does it support the latest PCIe version? And then, you know, how many slots of M.2, for example? Those are the things usually people care about uh, when choosing a motherboard. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's one of the things that you, you kind of forget until you're building it. And then you're like, oh, man, I would have freaking, <laughs> I, I would have paid more for that. But probably at the point where you're comparing motherboards, you're probably just going to say, oh, this one's cheaper. I'm going to choose that one, even if it doesn't include it. Yeah, anyway. Could be indeed, yeah. It's, it's a tough one. Anyway. Okay. So let me put this on its back, and then I will show you what cables I already connected and which one I routed to the front already. Yes. Yes. So... Here's the 8-pin power connector. Um, there are two on the motherboard. The power supply only has one. You only have to connect one. Uh, you can connect two for load balancing. Um, you can actually use two separate power supplies if you're going to do more heavy overclocks, but that's not something I think many people would use a B660 board for, for extreme overclocking. Um, then we have the 24-pin power connector. I already pre-routed the uh, connection for the power buttons, reset buttons, HDD, LED, power LED. Here you see the connectors for uh, the front audio and the front USB. Um, and I also put this one to the front, so the 8-pin power connector for the GPU. And the other front USB Gen 3.2, or uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1. So I'm going to put this down for a second. Mike, Mike, Mike oh. question. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. But I, you just showed the, the front panel connectors, right? Yes. You're a motherboard guy. You say it's been the same... Um, layout on motherboards for the pins for well, a long time yeah do, do you still have to look it up or do you know it no, by heart i know it by heart okay respect <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> you don't no i always have to look it up and i mean if you're lucky it's on the motherboard itself i can I'm actually show you if you want I because this is a smaller motherboard does it still have the little diagram on it uh, no it doesn't have a diagram here it's okay. in the manual yeah let yeah. me see if i can put this down because oh yeah. Oh, okay. It's a little bit. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. okay. Here is the connector. It's called uh, JFP1. Yes. Then you see you have four pins on top and five pins on the bottom. The one on the right is the ground pin. You're not using that one. If you go to the top row, the ones on the right, those are for the power button, the power switch. Then you have the two on the left are for the power LED. Then, so this is the ground pin. You skip that one. Here yeah. you have the two for the reset button, and here you have the two for the HDD LED. You lost me at okay. So, you, so basically, <laughs> but yeah, you can carefully read about this in the manual, or yeah, if you yeah. look it up on uh, on the, Google, this you one will also easily find. You're right, RTFM for <laughs> JFP1. <laughs> That's correct. Okay, so <laughs> I'm like quickly going to connect slogan. those. I mean, if it is, but is it like, is that the same for all motherboard vendors as well? Has it been standardized or is it? No, I don't think it is ah. for all vendors. So that's because Mr. Masterdog was saying, I was thinking that as well. And I think with it, actually every time this comes up, I, I also think that like, why don't we just make it a single plug? Like, you know, because for example, the USB and the front audio, you also don't divide those up into several connectors. It's one connector. But that's connector. a standardized thing. So if that's you will make thing. it a single yeah. plug on the case, then if you would put in a different yeah. brand motherboard, then yeah. it wouldn't work. So that's probably the whole reason why it hasn't been converted into one single connector that can only go in one way. It's because it's not a standardized uh, uh, thing. So uh, indeed, the motherboard from a different vendor, it probably it can go in in another order. Um, so then it wouldn't work. 
And even though we do believe in this case you should use an MSI motherboard, you yes. don't have to. We, we don't want to force you. No. Nope. So that, that would be a, a mistake, a faux pas. So we're not excluding other motherboards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the real question is, why aren't those connections standardized? Yeah, good question. Because, I mean, uh, okay, not all cases have all those functions. I guess that could be one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. But that means basically you're, you're, you could omit Still, this a is basically the standard. It's I was going to say, you could, you could omit a couple of the pins then, if, if some of the, uh, as in leave them out. But that shouldn't really influence the layout, right? No. For no. MSI boards, you could standardize this. Because on every yeah. MSI board, you will find this pin out for the JFP1. Yeah. So basically, some of them are different because because reasons. <laughs> How do you mean? I, I, maybe them? there is a good reason for it. I, again, yeah, I also I have to check. I don't know, yeah. because yeah. I know in the past, indeed, um, motherboards came with those adapters. Yes. So basically, outside of the case, you still had to put the individual ones on, yeah. but you did it outside and then plugged it into the motherboard at once. Yeah. Yeah. But I actually don't know why they are not included anymore. I have to admit that I didn't use them myself. Hmm. Because I thought if I have to plug them separately in anyway, I might as well do that on the motherboard instead of... Yeah. But yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine that some people would find it more comfortable in the DIY building process to do that outside of the case instead yeah. of inside the case. Yeah. Anyway. But I guess it's, it's because there's n like no organization... For example, I mean, like USB, it's like, you know, there's, it's standardized. It's, yeah, you, know, you have to follow that. There's a specification you have to follow. Uh, same for other kinds of things like ATX, uh, uh, you know, there are certain standards for, for, for certain things, but I guess this specific, those front panel connectors just. It's a motherboard vendor specific thing. Yeah. Okay. I connected some more cables. So let me quickly summarize to you guys what I did. Let's go. There we go. Anyway, seems like I've really started the discussion there. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, you have the front USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1. Right there, you have the front audio connector, the HD audio one. Here, I connected the uh, USB hub with the three-pin J Rainbow header. So that's the five-fold one. And right here is the USB 2.0. Um, Front, front connector, so yeah. that's for the two USB 2.0 ports on the front. And here on the right, that's what the discussion was all about. Yes. <laughs> Those little JFP bastards. One. Yeah. <laughs> um, Silent Shadow is asking, why are 24 pin connectors not right angled? Ooh. Um, especially on smaller motherboards, that's, that's quite an issue because an angled connector takes up way more space on the motherboard. Um, we have done it on certain models in the past, but I believe the only ones we have done it with are extended ATX one uh, at once, because here, you, as you can see, there are components directly behind this. So you would need to fit those somewhere else in order to make this angle. Another thing is that not all cases have enough space here in order to fit the 24 pin power connector in sideways. So that's for compatibility reasons. On most models, you will not see an angle 24 pin connector. Yeah. It's not impossible, but Especially in smaller cases and with smaller motherboards, yeah. it's a bigger challenge. It does, it does limit you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically everything is connected here. Then it's time to grab our liquid cooler. Ooh. And before we're going to put that in, we first need to attach this bracket to the CPU block. Yes. So this is specifically for LGA 1700. Um, of course, if you're going to use this liquid cooler with a different socket, make sure to choose the correct mount. And this is actually a very easy process. You just slide it on from the side. At a certain point, you will hear a click, and that's it. Yeah, there's a space between the, like the actual block uh, or the surface that will hit, will, will touch the CPU, and uh, yeah, the, the block above that indeed. Yeah. So there's a little slot and that's basically where you slide it in. Mm -hmm. 
Any um, any advice on how to place it? I know there's always a lot of discussion on how to put the you know which side should be up, the, with, especially with regards to the cables or sorry the the sleeve. Yeah, no, sorry, not sleeving. How do you call it? The tubing. That's that's the word. Yeah, I'm going to position it in the top like this. So I'm going to position it in the top. You can also mount it in the front if you want to. Um, a lot of discussion is usually with the Acetec designs where the um, pump is in the CPU block. Um, that, that is the part that's hanging down at the moment for you. Yeah, that's but in, in this design, just, just the pump is not in there. For those who don't know what the block is. But basically yeah. what you want to avoid with those models is that you put it like this. So that you put this in the bottom and this at the top because then you could get bubbles in here and that could have an influence on the longevity of your CPU block. But also the cooling performance. Also the cooling performance. Because the, if there's air trapped in, in that part, which yeah. is actually where most of the heat will be concentrated, that means less heat is going to be uh, transported exactly. away. And, and exactly. you know, yeah. anyway. Um, and it can also make a certain noise. Um, even though the pump is now also on top, Theoretically, I haven't yeah. experienced similar issues with the pump in the radiator design. I think maybe because the positioning is different; it's angled on on a liquid on a CPU block, whereas here it's flat. So maybe that's a difference. But I've never experienced any of those sound performance issues with the radiator in the top of the case. That, and I'm, right I'm suspecting that the radiator, because it, it houses more water than the than the block, so it could it be indeed that the bubbles go into the impact. radiator and not into the. Yeah into the pump. Yep. Uh, Mr. Masterox is asking, how much smaller is your system? A lot smaller, really <laughs> a lot smaller. Yeah, this is... Uh, like I actually don't know how many liters this case is from the top of my head, but mm, the system I have is 7.2. That's quite small. Yeah. I would guess this is over 30, so it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pre-route some of the cables through the cable management holes right here um, because once I put in the radiator I cannot properly access it anymore so I got th this is the uh, cable for the uh, pump then I have the two fans on the radiator with the fan cable and the RGB cable so those I will also route through the cable management holes so if you get Liquid coolers with RGB lighting, be warned, you always get a lot more cables than when you have a model without RGB. Yes, because as you can imagine, uh, every fan basically ha then has two cables instead of one. Yeah. Because every fan, of course, needs to have like the power and the steering of you know how, how fast it needs to go. Um, but also it needs to have then uh, yeah, a, a different, a separate connector just for the RGB. And, and then some some of the um, some of the liquid coolers they will like connect them into one uh, on on the block itself. So basically, you know, bas or how do you say that? They loop it through, let's say, um, in some cases. I'm, I'm not sure if ours do that. Probably not. How do you mean loop it through? Yeah, basically they just connect the uh, two fans together yeah. on the radiator, and then there's only one connector for for fan duty and for uh, RGB. Oh, going on the out. radiator because I have seen it at yeah. certain blocks, but yes. ooh, I didn't like it because you get you see all the cables on the side yeah. where you watch through yeah. the tempered yeah. glass side panel. Yeah, they uh, have to yeah. indeed. They have to then. So it, it brings it's it's a compromise as well. Yeah. So it, it's a little bit easier perhaps because you, you have to connect fewer. Uh, well, you have fewer connectors to, to deal with, but yeah, it has its drawbacks as well. Okay. So now I'm going to screw the radiator in the top. Let me quickly check if I have all the cables. So I got two fan cables, both with the RGB. Then I have. The, um, the cable for the pump and later on I will have an additional RGB cable um, but that's for the block and that I will route after I install the block on the CPU. So first I will screw in and this is difficult because I'm right-handed but now I'm holding the radiator <laughs> with my right hand. Oh, I knew this was going to be a challenge. <laughs> Let me turn around. Or I can just turn this. Yeah. <laughs> trying to wrap my head around what um AZ and Venom was saying, um, I'm guessing the case cannot do push pull on top. How do you mean push pull yeah, on top? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get my head around. Cannot do push pull on top. 
It's you mean like that you would put fans on either side of a radiator? Because... What? Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, okay. Like that. Um, um, I boy. think you will run into clearance issues in yes. this case because it's Double relatively fans. compact. Yeah, okay. yeah. And also, I'm not sure, I mean, you could do that, but is there, I've never tried that. Is, is there a huge benefit from doing um, that? It can give you a bit better cooling performance or also the balance with silence mm, can be okay. better. So, for example, yeah. also if you have like a tower air cooler, if you have a pull, push pull configuration, yeah. you can let the fans spin slower, still yeah, get a yeah. similar amount of airflow yeah. and have, mm, it, have mm. it more silent. It's noticeable. All right, that's interesting. But yeah, then um, you would need a bigger case. Yes. Even a smaller motherboard wouldn't solve that because it's probably... No, because the motherboard is set to a certain height in the case, right? Yeah, but in this case, you would... Later on, I will show you. Um, but you would also need, for example, lower memory modules. But if you would put an extra fan here, yeah. you would be... You would have issues with the position of the memory modules because these are relatively high. Not just that, but also wouldn't the the heatsink of the motherboard get in the way at some point? Sorry, the heatsink of the motherboard. Yeah, yeah. In this yeah. in this configuration, you just have like exactly enough space for a radiator um, on top of the motherboard. Yeah. But if you would have a push pull configuration, of course, you would basically thicken the space you need for the radiator. And then you would interfere with the top heatsink of this motherboard. Yeah. Not all mod motherboards have this top heatsink, so it can be different for other ones, but this one definitely has. Yeah. Master Center, you're, you're not wrong. Uh, more fans can equal more noise, but it depends on how fast they're spinning. If you have more fans and all have them at maximum RPM, then yes, yes they will produce more noise. Yeah. Um, but if you have, for example, two fans at half the speed, they will be more silent mm. than a single one. Interesting. So speed. Mr. Masterdog is saying yes, push pull helps, but not. It won't be more silent because um, often push pull causes turbulence that makes extra noise. So indeed, that's you have to that, I match think your fans also really good. Sorry. You have to properly match your fans as well. If you're, for example, yeah. using different fans, then you will definitely have turbulence. Yeah. You still can experience a little bit of turbulence, but because of course you have certain resistance of the air pushing yeah. through, so ne fans will You, you get a, an air pressure difference uh, located between the fans then, I guess. But for example, um, I know these um, side Mugen coolers, you have mm. like the, uh, what is it? The PCMH edition, I believe, and those have got like a push-pull configuration, yeah. and that one is significantly more silent than the single fan version. While yeah, but still they're getting configured to, to work together like that, I guess, right? Yeah. Specifically. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But that one comes with push pull already. Yeah. Actually, I think I had that in the past, like a long time ago, one of the one of the earlier um, uh, scythe ah. coolers. Um, yeah. VRK is uh, uh, saying micro ATX build or motherboard? Yes. So <laughs> micro ATX case and micro ATX motherboard. Both. Um. Let me put this down because now I will install the CPU block. But first, I'm going to show you. Silent Shadow is saying fans with better bearings, may maybe maglev, so magnet magnetic levitation bearings are quieter. I'm not sure if they're quieter because you you can't really hear the bearings on. Uh, for example, we have gr on the graphics card as well, right? We have fans with uh, double ball bearings as well. Yes. You shouldn't be hearing the bearings anyway. Um, These are double ball bearings. Exactly. Um, so they, they, you know, they shouldn't produce any noise anyway. The noise you're hearing is probably from the, the airflow. Um, maglev probably wouldn't be quieter, but uh, you, uh, I think that they, they run less risk of wearing out. That's, I think, the thing, because maglev basically means they don't touch each other. Um, so it's, it's, they are suspended from each other, and the magnetic force is, is kind of keeping them away from each other. So that, I think, would be the only real benefit from um, between those two things. We've looked at it in the past, and indeed, it's, it's quite more expensive. And the benefit really only is that they would outlive um, probably uh, ball-bearing fans or, or sleeve-bearing fans. The the problem is that even the especially ball bearing fans they would run so long I that will, it really doesn't matter. Anyway. I will continue in the meanwhile. Otherwise yes. we won't have time for Sorry. the takes yes. two later on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I just installed the radiator in here, so now I'm going to install the CPU block. But first, of course, I'm going to oh, apply yeah. some 
So, thermal paste. So, to so the what CPU. is your preferred method? Is it the uh, the rice grain or is it yeah. the? Uh, yeah, it's basically the rice is grain. Is it the toothpaste? Like. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I just put like a rice grain in the middle of the CPU, and I basically us? spread it using the pressure of the block. Can you show us with the yes. cam? So now I applied thermal paste, okay. so I will put the block on top of this, and that one will spread it out over the CPU. Yep. Um, this is specifically for this CPU. If you're, for example, using a thread ripper, which is way bigger, yeah. then I wouldn't suggest doing this. Then I would put position the, um, it in different locations in the CPU. Um, otherwise, it will never stretch to the sides of the CPU properly. Yeah. So basically the five dot dice method or you know however people want to say it basically you you just put multiple dots in in uh multiple places yeah for for bigger cpus yeah. i definitely would suggest to do that for yeah. a small cpu like this should be fine but you need to always make sure that you you prevent uh using too much because that yeah. that is also not good and it also gives you a huge mess if oh, you yes. take it off again yeah Put some more. No, this is actually enough. This is this is plenty. Yeah. There this is, is no going to be enough. Yes, because what happens is when you push it down, uh, it, it will disperse over the surface area. Yeah. And especially if when once you start clamping down and, and putting the the pressure on the uh, the bracket. Fangla Mia says, just use an old credit card <laughs> and completely cover it. Oof. There's no no, no real need to do so. The yeah. only thing is you you would kind of lose a lot of thermal paste gonna by gonna on your it, credit yeah. card. Because it's going to stick to the credit card yeah. as well. I, I've never seen any real benefit in doing so. I've never seen significantly better spread of the thermal paste. When, when taking this cooler off, it's properly covered in thermal paste, but not too much. Silent Shadow, do more expensive thermal paste make a difference? Um, uh, in general, yes, but it, I mean, the, the price doesn't always mean it's better by definition um, liquid metal would give you a little bit better results but the longevity of liquid metal is a lot shorter yes. so you would have to repaste it way earlier and then it's a lot more uh, iffy and and potentially dangerous because liquid metal it's metal so it can also conduct electricity if you spill any of it on your motherboard or you know within the CPU socket that that could cause massive issues yeah, you have to be careful with them. Yes. And it, indeed, it's, it's a lot more expensive yeah. than regular thermal But I mean, paste. if you're saying, uh, you know, compare like the ultimate, the, 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 the one of the cheapest uh, thermal paste versus one of the more premium ones, uh, like, for example, Thermal Grizzly there indeed, or, uh, uh, oh God, what was the other one that's quite um, well known as well? Cryonaut? It's also Thermal Grizzly? No, that's, that, yeah, no, there was yeah. another uh, brand, um, Arctic Silver, I believe. So that was also pretty good uh, in the past. Yeah, that one's also quite affordable. Yes. It's but it's, it's like our Arctic Silver is quite a regular thermal yeah, paste. Yeah. You also but have that one Arctic is usually Kermit. good enough. Um, but yeah. Especially for the cooler and the CPU that we're using, this will be I mean, easily honestly, sufficient. It, there's, a, I think, also a big case of diminishing returns at some point. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can put a lot of money into uh, the, the most expensive thermal paste, and yes, it probably will have a bit of an impact maybe a couple of degrees but you're gonna have to ask yourself is that worth spending i don't know how maybe much you could it have is, spent like that on a euro. better cooler and maybe yeah. that would have made more difference. exactly yeah so at some point really you have to ask yourself what the, what makes more sense and it's it's also on in a, a system like this it would be a big portion of the price actually if you would have a very premium thermal paste whereas if you're if you really want to get the yep. maximum out of it for the most high-end build then it could be worth it yeah Exactly. Um, so the liquid cooler is installed. Now yes. I'm going to connect some stuff at the rear. And it's going to be a little bit hard to show because I need two hands. Don't worry. In the meantime, I will uh, select another winner. How about that? That's a good idea. I'm pretty sure you guys won't mind, right? So this cable actually comes included with the liquid cooler. Oh. It connects both the fans to a single header. It's a bit like the four to one that comes with the case. So basically, I can connect both of them only to the CPU fan header of the motherboard. Right. 
Okay, so guys, uh, I'm going to draw another winner. You can, uh, if you want to participate, uh, you can go to msi.com slash two slash insider or follow the link that our uh, stream elements is sharing on both Twitch and YouTube every five minutes. It's the Gleam link. The more actions you perform there, the better your chance of winning. If you're a regular viewer, viewer make sure you also enter your uh, loyalty bonus points. You can do that every single live stream. Uh, they don't expire. You just throw them in there and it just enhances your chances of winning. And yeah, you can win uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, the full game, plus the Dawn of Ragnarok DLC today. So I'll see if we can draw another winner. Do do do. And yes, we have another winner, and their name is Charves. Charves. Congratulations. Congratulations. We will get the game codes out to you as soon as possible after the live stream. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're going to be giving away a, bit, a few more codes during this live stream. So uh, if you haven't won yet, please make sure you uh, participate. And uh, yeah. This is quite interesting to show, by the way. So let me quickly grab my camera. Um, because I'm now using the uh, yeah. 4 to 1. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm Ooh. Stuck. I think it's still stuck on. Uh, let me see. Yep, I think we need to. Wait. Let me restart uh, my. Droid, droid cam crashed, unfortunately. This happens every now and again. Yeah, mm. droid cam can be handy, but it can also. I think you're f you need to restart the app on your phone. Yeah, I just did. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're back. There we go. Oh, it's not that stable yet? Oof, yeah. Okay. Hello, frame rate. Uh. But as you can see, you have one. Uh, connector on one side and then you have three on the other side so I'm going to route this one to this direction for the rear fan and I'm going to route these three to this side for the front fans mm, it has frozen up again okay uh, let me drop this aside no, maybe we can see it oh actually you were looking at the rear okay yeah oh yeah let me uh, turn it a little bit oh yeah you can uh, there you go so here I now have the three fan connectors, so I have to look all of them up. This is one of them. I've changed thermal phase twice on my 10-year-old PC, says Eidolon. Yeah, I mean, again, it, th that really also makes sense if you're either you're, you're swapping out uh, some components or something, or maybe uh, using a new cooling, or indeed if you, if you have the same PC for I don't know how long, um, and even on your graphics card at that point, for example, after a couple of years, and you still want to keep using it, it, it could make a difference to um, yeah, give it a new coat of thermal paint uh, or, or thermal paste. Because yeah, thermal paste, it's really, it's most effective if it's, um, you know, if it's not dried out and uh, it will lose some effectiveness after. It really depends on how, how much you use it as well. Uh, because if you, if you have it on high temperatures all the time, uh, then it will dry out quicker and lose effectiveness a bit quicker than uh, if you, for example, only have it uh, turn it on and, and play games very occasionally. But yeah, after a couple of years, it, it may be worth that. Some quick advice here. If you take off your cooler for whatever reason, always yes. replace your thermal paste. Yes. If you're going to take it off anyway, you might as well do that. Yeah. And if once you've taken it off and put it back on, the performance will decrease significantly. Mm. Mm. CJ Bill, noted. He's saying Irian webcam is great if you keep having issues with droid cam. So I'm going to write that down. Hmm. Because indeed, we, we do. Yeah, we're yeah we had some issues with droid cam, so that could be an yeah, interesting every now and again. solution. I mean, sometimes it works perfectly, yeah. and sometimes it just freezes up for no reason whatsoever. Or at least we haven't been able to find the reason for it. Let me see. Mr. Mastodox saying, I would, I would put more paste on 12th gen after the test I've seen Gamers Nexus do on 12th gen. Well, mm, no, I personally wouldn't do it, especially not for an i5. Maybe on the, indeed, if you're, if you're looking yeah. at an i9 or something, then maybe it, it might it's become more of a thing to look at. But for an i5, it's probably a non-issue. Let me see. So I've got one. Chronic Mayhem says, I tried to change it once a year. So you, you basically treat it like uh, like a car, where you just you know, change the oil every year or something. <laughs> hey, if it works for you. 
more paste won't make it cooler no i mean if you have if you come to a certain point as long as it covers uh the surface area and and make sure that the connection between the cooler surface area uh, the cold plate of that and the cpu the ihs basically then that's all it needs to do more uh thermal paste at that point indeed would just be a waste so it wouldn't add anything to the cooling um to the cooling performance okay so connecting the rear fan and then i have one more three pin connector right here and that's actually the one for the pump so i'm not going to connect that with the other cables but we have a separate header for the pump on the front of the motherboard yeah so i'm going to route this to the front connect it right here Do MSI make any landscape, landscape flat cases? What was the question? Do MSI make, uh, still make any landscape flat cases? Landscape flat cases. I think you, you mean the ones basically where you could put the monitor on? I don't think we ever did. Uh, maybe a very long time ago. I'm not sure. Not that yeah, I, I know of. I don't recall indeed. Um. So now I'm going to do what is not smart, and that's closing the case before I tested anything and hope it works. <laughs> so this is the YOLO moment yep. <laughs> we've all been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to see, of course, that this time it's not functioning. Well, it is a live stream, right? So it's kind of like the rule <laughs> that indeed, you know, you did everything perfectly. So it stands to reason that it shouldn't work. <laughs> I'm even already closing it before I put the graphics card in. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, well, I don't know. Does that thing have a uh, uh, integrated graphics? This the one iPhone? does actually, yes. Oh, so that would actually, I mean, the game wouldn't run that well on it, but still. No, but I'm going to put in uh, a discrete graphics card. Yes. But I already closed it, so it's easier to put it on this side. Yeah. Um, first, I'm going to take out the existing brackets here on the back and this one needs two of them. Certain graphics cards may need three, so yeah. make sure to check that. If you have a really low-end graphics card, it might even only need one. But those are uh, very rare these days. Break Twin is asking, does this case have an ATX version? Not specifically this case, but we have several ATX models within our Forge series. So you can actually check them out and see if there is any of them that you like. So let me take out the brackets. There we go. And that's where we put in the GPU. Deep Single was asking, uh, do MSI make air coolers? Yeah, I'm not even sure if we still not sure actively if we still sell do. them, but we did have them indeed a while ago. But those were, you know, relatively basic uh, air coolers. I think you might be still able to find them on our website. What were they called again? Can't even recall. Uh, core Frozer. Oh yeah, Core Frozer, that was it, yeah. I think we had uh, just a couple of versions. Um, I mean, it wasn't, yeah, they weren't like um, uh, as, as big as, for example, the, the Scythe Mugen or whatever. Um, so these were, you know, they were a step up from the uh, boxed cooler uh, because they were a bit bigger uh, in terms of the, the surface area and the heat sink. But especially with uh, the, the higher end uh, CPUs these days and, and the you know the way higher um, TDP that they have or power usage potentially it also makes more sense to uh, to do liquid coolers also liquid cooling looks a lot better I think yeah but of course that's personal preference yes here you can see what a liquid cooler looks like you can see way uh, more maybe in the detail cam oh Mm. Yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah, you'll have to yeah. do it closer, maybe. Let but, me yeah. first uh, finish yep. this up. So I yes. put the graphics card in. If you go to the close-up cam, then I will show you. Here we have our eight-pin power connector. Still need to connect that one to the side of the graphics Only card. Only requires a single one, right? Yeah. Yep. There we go. Nice. So you hear a click, and then you know it's properly connected. Yep. Um, so this one actually has a double one, but we're not going to use this one. So I just put it underneath here. And then I'm also going to close this side and see if it works. <laughs> uh <-huh. 
Christmas century saying, I don't want it to post. It would be awesome for you. <laughs> We're going to Sherlock Holmes mode. Don't jinx it. Out. Don't jinx it. Yep. Everyone wants it to fail. No, no, so not I have everybody. to do what's on my shirt. Not everybody. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, does this motherboard have the two additional ATX power connectors, the 8-pin and the 4-pin? It has two 8-pin, actually. Yeah. Uh, indeed, at the top, this one has yeah. two 8 pins. So you don't have to use both of them, so I'm only using a single one right now because the power supply only provides a single one, but it does have two. Mm. There we go. There is one very important thing that we need to do before booting this up. Peeling. Definitely, some ASMR peeling. Here it goes. Ooh. There we go. By the way, Mike might have done this a bit prematurely as well, because I would also recommend only doing this when you're completely done, you know it works, because otherwise... I don't. I'm about to gonna, find out you're if you're gonna, it works. You're going to have this, you know, Mike now, <laughs> just by touching the PC, you're going to get fingerprints on it, so you need to True. clean it off again. I'm still confident. You are. Yes. As long as it didn't I, crash, I'm still confident. I also have faith in you, Mike. <laughs> you do? You, you've done this so many times. You, that's you, true. You, you do this in your dreams, right? I've already failed plenty of times, so that's why I'm confident Well, that's right how you now. learn. <laughs> it's indeed the, the learning process. Yes. No 3080 this time. No. Nope. Uh, actually, we, we're using an RX 6600 XT. Moment of truth. Gaming X. Ooh. Ooh. Well, this is disappointing. It seems it, to work so it, far. It works straight away. Hey, we don't know yet. Oh, It's posting. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Do you need a GPU bracket on one side because of GPU sagging? No, especially not with this GPU, but also... I'm really sorry, guys, but it works. <laughs> the jinx didn't work today. <laughs> rigged. This was rigged. <laughs> okay, um, let's go back right here because now I can show you the function of the um, Insta Light Loop button here on the front. So if I press this right now, <laughs> you don't see a thing because this is green, obviously. Yes. You can cycle through all the different <coughs> colors here. So there are some effects with several colors simultaneously or pulsing. Um, but there is actually another function as well, because right now, maybe it's hard to see, but the, um, the RGB on the graphics cards, for example, doing something else, but I can also sync this up with the motherboard by just long pressing it, it will flash, and now it's synced up. So right now, it is set to like yeah. some kind of rainbow mode. Color loop, yeah. Yeah, and everything is synced together yep. within that mode it's easy as that yeah disappearing fans it's also the liquid yeah. <laughs> stealth <Yeah>. fans <laughs> what a shame everything works <laughs> <laughs> so there it is the end result yes our affordable micro atx gaming system i think that calls for another giveaway don't you i think so too yeah and then um, let's do what it's meant <laughs> meant to do yes Play a game. It takes two. All right, so uh, if you haven't already, uh, please go to msi.com slash two slash insider or uh, follow the Gleam link being posted every five minutes on Twitch and YouTube. You can uh, participate there. The more actions you perform there, the more chance you have of winning. Uh, if you're a regular viewer, also add in your uh, loyalty bonus points that you get, and that will increase your chances of winning even further. So. Uh, see if we have a, another winner and actually maybe let's do two because well because we can and in meanwhile and, and because I'm Mike actually in. got it working the first time around so we got to celebrate that um, let's see, the system is taking a little bit more time. Mm -mm. So we have, yeah, we have two winners now. Um, let's see, the 
first winner is called Mylot. Congratulations. Mylot or Mage Majlot. Not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, and the second one, oof, that's also Virgo Luciel 97. Virgo Luciel 97. Hope I pronounced that right. Anyway, uh, congratulations uh, to you both. We'll get the codes out to you as soon as possible. I uh, hope you enjoy it. So you both won a copy of both Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the base game, and also the DLC Dawn of Ragnarok. Yes. So you get two of those uh, codes. How many people completed all the loyalty points? I don't know, actually. I can't see. Winners are human or bot? Uh, I, I like to think they're all human, and I think they are. Uh, we've seen... We see often people in the chat, uh, you know, being very happy with it. So I'm pretty sure they're human. Okay. Um, let me quickly show. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit hard to see. It's quite small. Here you can see Intel Core i5 12400. Currently, we're running at stock speeds, with, but with this motherboard, you can, of course, do base clock overclocking. For more information about that, make sure to check out our previous live stream where we told you all details that you need to know. Um, running 16 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 3600 memory from G-Scale Trident Z. It's currently also running at 3600 uh, megahertz, so XMP is enabled. And then we're running the RX 6600 XT Gaming X graphics card. Um, now uh, let's play some It Takes Two. Yes, let's do that. Um, then I need to switch. Um, uh, yeah, I can leave it on this. Switch the chat to a different monitor. And then I need to see if I've got a PC here as well. Oh, actually, wait, let me check. Because I did enable the specs. Yeah, I'll enable them here as well. So you can see the specs that the system uh, Mike is using. Uh, they're rotating at the bottom. Yeah. It may block the subtitles, though. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you should be able to... We cannot hear the game sounds, unfortunately, but you should be able to. So maybe you don't need the subtitles. Let me see if I can invite you to the game. Oh, yes. Well, I, that, I think if you just join a game, I should be able to join... Uh, you should have an invite as well. Okay. On the left, you can actually see the current temperatures there of uh, both the graphics card and the CPU. And you can also see the power draw. So currently, while sitting in the lobby here, uh, the 6600 XT is drawing 134 watts. And it's currently at 51 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Celsius. Um, the i5-12400, for everyone who thought it was not enough thermal paste or not applied properly, <laughs> is currently running at 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, what's the ambient temperature here? 20 degrees or something? Mm, I think 22, 23, okay. something like that, yeah. Um, but it's also currently not pulling a lot of power, only no. 21 watts, maybe slightly higher while playing a game. Um, but it shouldn't run hot at all, especially not under a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. Okay. Um, yeah, we're connected. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we want to have the story as well, the beginning story, for the people who don't know it? Peter? Uh, I, I skip it for now. Yeah, skip it. Takes yeah. quite a lot of time. Uh, Maybe you can summarize it. You already takes, did a little bit. Takes two. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's like uh, it's it's about a family that's sitting at the table, and then suddenly mom and dad are saying, "You know what? I I I, I we 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 want to split up or something like that," and the kids like, "No." Actually, I didn't. I just saw it. I didn't. Um... And then basically, the the tears of the kid cursed the parents. Yes. And they became these puppets. Yes. And, and now, now they, they have, have to, to work together yes. to get back to the normal world. Yeah. I only I only wish it it worked that way for the kids, and that you know the, in the end the parents get back together because parents splitting up for kids is uh, one of the worst things imaginable. I guess. Fortunately. Not my backstory, but <laughs> it is my backstory. My parents split up when I was young. Oof. All right. Well. Oop. All right. So okay. We so we have to what put in do? those fuses. Oh, we have to put them back. 
Yeah. And then what? There's another we one? Have, yeah, we have to find another one. Well, there, there is one here, but okay, this one cannot put them out. Hmm. Ah, there's, yes, I can see a message there. Oh. Hey, it's running away. Ah. The fuse yeah. is running away. Yeah, it is. And so probably it takes both of us to chase it down. Where is it? It's jumping up there. Oh. Whee. Get here, fuse. Yes. Oh, I fell. I need your help. I don't know where it, I am. It, it takes two, oh, I Peter. Fell. <laughs> I know. I fell. You fell. Yeah. I'm. I'm. You have horrible. to double jump, and you can also. I know. After your double jump, you can also dodge to get further. Oh. I fell again. <laughs> fell again. <laughs> I'm still trying to get, like, there was a dash button as well. I don't remember. Ah, uh, then I can just read chat while. Oh, okay. So that's <laughs> X. Keeps on yeah. dying. I honestly, I'm, I'm horrible at that. Oh, still, I fell again. <laughs> 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 I, I made the jump the first time. You no. have to double jump and you yeah, can. Yeah, I did. Use, you did? Yeah. And you dodged? You can dodge with what? B, I, I believe. I, I keep pressing. No, it's, it's X, I think. Yeah, I know. So jump, double jump. There we go. Asian Venom says, better have parents that happily remarry than toxic household. I agree. Well, yeah, but still, it's sad. Okay, what now? Get over yeah, here. Yeah, but in the long run, I definitely agree. I wouldn't, I, I'm not able to talk go. about that because, again, I never experienced it, but... Sweetabix says, I don't think I'm hearing any game volume. Hmm. Uh, Can you check, Peter? Yes. Let me check. Nope. Let me Indeed, there is no game volume. Ah, it may have reset. Quickly alt-tabbing. Yeah, it, it may have reset to like your monitor. So it does that sometimes. You need to check the, the sound settings indeed. And make sure it's, it's outputting through the, the capture card. There you go. I have no idea why uh, systems do this, but I've noticed this a lot of times. It just it will default to the monitor instead of something else. On the other hand, this is just <laughs> another um, HDMI connector for the for the PC, so the Can capture card. I mean, is it working now, guys? Ah, yeah. Okay. We good. Good. I can sprint. Uh. Oh. Where do I go? Oh wait, what's this? Why? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, don't do that. Is this the right direction? Why did I... That was oh, forever walking backwards okay. now. <laughs> I okay. think I came from here. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. I think I have to go here, but... There's like... This is nasty. There's like a, a, a wall socket here. You, can you see me? Yeah. And and it says like, why? Like, okay, you have, you have to press it. So you do, and you take the nail, and you just... <laughs> <laughs> Why though? Why, why does it tell you to do that? I don't get it. Ah, okay, so I'm pressing it. Yeah, I kind of forgot the controls because I actually have played this game before. I finished the game even together with my girlfriend. It took us like 14 hours or something. It's quite a long game, so definitely worth it, I would say. Oh, wait. And I think it's one of the, the best co op games there is. Can you please coordinate I think we have to me, simultaneously Cody. press this. All right, all right. Okay, so hey, three, let's two, two together. one. Let's go. Okay, okay. There we go. So, what now? Uh, Stokes Easy says a little bit of screen tearing. Yeah, that's correct. Unfortunately, with the capture card, we cannot use uh, G Sync or Free Sync because the capture card is not supported. Um, so that's why you can indeed see a little bit of screen tearing. We could put, put on G-Sync, but that would get some input delay. We need to go up here or...? Um, I think we have to do something with this, because it's... Jump and slide on the surface. Oh, no, we're not falling. Okay. Oh. Oh! Come here, Fuse. Oh, that was not a good idea. Bad life choices. Uh oh, yeah. Where do you go from here? Okay, you jump on it. Ah, I see. And then oh, watch out for, for the saw oh. right 
that was a that <laughs> was a bad fell. timing. Wrong button. Hmm. Yeah. What the hell? Can just jump. I tried to I tried not like grab onto this. Oh here we go. Well, maybe that container can help. Okay. I'm chasing the fuse. Get back here. Um, um, um what? How did I die? What what happened there? How do I die from this? Are you coming or what? Well, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yes! Nice. What now? Woo! Oh. Help! Alright. Wow! We got it. Hey, May! Did you see my flip? Let's do it again. Oh, we're not here to do flips. Oh no, you're right. Don't fall. This is serious. <laughs> we're hunting fuses with my go. Damn. This is the last one. Let's put it in. Diamond Destruct says you got a double jump and dash. Yeah. Also, this game is great. Yeah, indeed. It's a really, really good game. Oh, we have to do it again. I also really like the variation in this game. Like throughout the whole game, you get so many different abilities. Uh -oh. I think many longer single-player games they tend to get a bit repetitive if you've played it a couple of hours. But I think it takes to just keeps on surprising. It's really good. There she is, Rose. No, that's the daughter. Not you again. Oh, move out of the way, you stupid fuck. Yeah, get out As you can see, way. while playing the game, we're at uh, 57 degrees for the GPU, oh, like you pulling 131 watts. CPU currently pulling 32 people. watts, and it's at 35, 34 degrees Celsius, approximately. Can you pull up the chat There's again? Someone I want you yes. to meet. What the hell is that? Why do I recognize your I like the 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 What the hell is that thing? Oh, That's a very <laughs> scary we, vacuum uh, cleaner. Met. Oh, yes. Sorry. Looks a bit like a vacuum cleaner. Oh, yeah. Because it is your vacuum cleaner. The book of love. Yo, vacuum. It's, it's the book of love. <laughs> you know who this guy is? Let me tell you. This is cool. There's also an American you know, Pie movie called Book of Love, right? Of crap uh. in your stomach. Oh, is it called that? <laughs> no. I don't know. I, I think there is one. That's you. You ruined my bones with all that crap. Crap? What? I was it's not my favorite that one in the American Pie series, but I believe there is one. Oh, wow. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, look, that's there it is. Nasty. <laughs> You call that that? Vacuum cleaner. Oh, well, that, is it a vacuum cleaner or is it more like a, one of those ventilation systems down. in the house? I think this is one of those vacuum cleaners oh. that has like a centralized system that you can use in several rooms. Thank you. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think, but I'm not sure. You put me away for life in here! Yep. Ah! Oh. Oh. Londok is saying the it's a 12400K. It's a 12400. It's a non-K CPU, so it's not an overclockable one. But with this motherboard, you can overclock it with base clock overclocking, but no unlock multiplier. Uh, it's a 65 watt processor with a max wattage of 117. You're not going to have heat problems. You want to get back to Rose? Yeah, actually, on this motherboard, you can also you, you can define your power limit, yes. so you can put it higher if you want. But yeah, this cooling is definitely sufficient for this CPU. 12400 you could even cool with, for example, a 120 millimeter radiator. We're also doing that. That's not collaboration. You know, collaboration. This one would actually have some more headroom to do a little bit of an overclock on it. Collaboration. You understand? Now, I'll see you later. Hasta la vista. Good luck. Bye bye now. Crazy book. This would never have happened if you hadn't broken it. Oh, yeah? Well, this would never have happened. Blaming each other. <laughs> fixed it, like you <laughs> promised. Well, I didn't know we'd end up in a place where all vacuum cleaners alive. Well, I'm missing the subtitles, are. by the way, but... <laughs> Maybe we're stuck and I don't here forever. The, the sound. forever. I think you can no switch way. them on we're getting a divorce. Yeah. on your no. system no, manually. Divorce, but, but we uh, can't I'd do have that. to pause them, I think. Ah, yeah. right, maybe I can do that here. Uh, subtitles. Yeah, on. We can also skip cutscenes, by the way, if you want. Unless we get back oh, into right. our real bodies. Okay. But it's it is a, it's a nice story. 
No, not too long. Okay. You know, I, I wonder where that annoying bug even came from. He said Rose bought him. But he doesn't sound like... Oh, oh looks, I died. You oh, too. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't sound like... I realize she's gonna have to stick to the... I'm just self-helpful. Okay, so okay. Honestly, away from the... I think you can okay. travel about the book. through it. Let's get to Rose. Yeah. Oh, well, I thought I was, we were supposed to like not, not get in there. But... No, 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 no! Oh, no, no. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, that was not the right one. Uh, I think I remember what one. So, I can sit on this. And I can control this. Oh. And now you can go in there. Oh, oh. I first should fall off. Oh. And I can launch. Why don't you block me? Whee! Okay, and then uh, and I. And then have you to have to press the red button. Okay, so so that. Yeah. And then what happens? Now you made this push air instead of pull air, so I don't oh, I get see. pulled inside. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we have to get in there. Oh. Uh, Diamond Destruct says, what is the setup? One or two PC? Uh, Peter is currently playing on a separate PC, but you could also do the, play this split screen, but not, we're not physically next to each other. No. So that's why we're currently running it on two PCs, but you don't have it. Oh. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Double jump and dash. There you go. Um, so here we have to do the thing again. Yeah, shall I do it this time? Um, yeah, sure. So, so if you aim that upwards. Rudy, get inside. Get in here. Please be gentle. Please. There we go. And that will change the direction. Yeah. All right. Oh. The current has reversed. So now, if you go to the other one and point it upwards. Oh yeah. Jump in here. You or yeah, oh. I'm already in there. I got oh, no. so Can I jump in there? Yeah, I can. There's a lot of fun, rumble actually. in the controller in this game. Yes. Open this up, and then you go there. Oh, okay. And I need to do what? And then you walk through it, and then I squash you. <laughs> Sorry That's about too that. fun. <laughs> I couldn't read What this. if I go through here? <laughs> You're a terrible person. <laughs> okay, so what do I do here first? Lundbach says Intel made some significant improvements between the 11 and the 12 generation process. My i7 1100K benchmark is nearly equal to my son's i5 12600K. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I think especially, of course, the key difference between the 11 and the 12 generation is, for example, for the 12600K your son has, it has both P and E cores, and the P cores give it a very good single thread performance, but the E cores also jump in if uh, you're doing any multi-threaded workloads. So it also gives a really good multi-threaded performance. Um, you have to block this somehow. Block, block, block. So I can walk through. Yes. Yep, thank you. Oh, PCBs. Yeah. Okay, and now we, we apparently have, because there's like uh, three things, I think we have to connect it. So if you do it first, I will hit the button and then I have to spread. That hurt. You, you do the next one. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Damn, the leg. too slow. Oh, <laughs> damn. Okay, let's try it okay, again. We need to do it again. I'll, I'll do the first one this time. You push the button. No, no, no. 
we need to start. Oh, you need to push it. Yes. Okay, you run, run, run. And then run, run. I'm the person who already played it. Can you imagine? <laughs> Oh, so close. that was very close. Okay. I take so long to. Uh... Okay. Got it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Totally works in electrocution. Another shoot. Yeah, nice. Hello, S Inspiration. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Yeah, it does change during the game a couple the of times. Yeah. Oh, how do we go here? Huh? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. It's all about timing here. This looks what dangerous. But does this fan don't have jump. RGBs? No, it doesn't. So that's why it's so slow. Yes. No, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I'm having real trouble getting the timing right on this, and even the perspective. It's like... Oh, man. I can't really see them coming as well. Maybe I'm... Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, I haven't really figured out the control. Diamond Destruct uh, says, note, you can run. Yeah, indeed, Peter. If you... I think it's pressing the left joystick. That toggles you into running mode, I Yeah, think. I know. But like, yeah. I'm still used to stray, so you, uh, where you can't actually fall off and stuff. What I actually I always just dodge around. Yeah. Um, do I need I think, to walk across this? Or? Yeah, I can control this. So I think if you need to jump on here. On that box thing? Yeah, or, or at the side. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, just try and fall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, start oh, spinning. Work? Oh, oh, wait, yeah. Okay. Yeah, start spinning. So. Now what? Okay. Okay, now jump on there. Yeah, I'm here. And I need to go see. something here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it is. Press it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's spinning automatically. <laughs> oh no! Ooh. Oh, you can't jump! Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to die! Yeah. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. I should have had a dodge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what is this? Okay, I'm not doing that again. I actually pressed the wrong button yeah, again, but now was the time. Oh. Yeah, let's keep moving. So these We're getting closer to the top. Oh, I can actually. Oh, what the hell? Okay. So I jumped on it and it didn't do anything. There we go. There we go. That's more like Okay, okay, you have to go in there. Why? Why? Yeah. In, in the side, jump in there. Yeah. Okay, and then go to the other one. Oh, yeah, all good. Oh. Oops! <laughs> <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> Not so good. Oh. What the? <laughs> Try again. Jump in sure? and launch. I, I am. And you have to dodge to the next one. What is dodging? Uh, B. What the? No. Or, or maybe double jump so you get higher I, in that, there? I, I tried that actually. On the first pass, it actually went better. You need, I think you need to. What happens when you, when you press the. when you um, pull the lever? It's yeah, so you need to do that when, when I. When, when I you jump, enter it, right? When I enter it, indeed. Yeah. So as soon as I pass the first ventilator, you need to flip the switch. Yeah, that's what I did, but you already died before you really? reached the second one. All right, let's try it again. Let's see. What the hell? Shall I try? Yeah. 
Okay, ready? Yes. Oh. <laughs> that works. See? I think it's all about the timing of when you flip the switch. And I think you have to double jump in the ventilator. I, I tried that. Did it work for you? No. Okay. Oh, oops, wrong button. <laughs> I really have to get used to the fact that X is... <laughs> Oops, wrong button. <laughs> Can you guys imagine that uh, I actually finished this is game? Is this a fire hazard? <laughs> Not without help. No, that's true. I got a hard carry by my girlfriend. This game is really good if you have friends. <laughs> Cue the sad music. <laughs> <laughs> this part is a little hard. So what now? Where, um, where are you at? You have to go back in here in a certain way. You have to go into the vacuum cleaner, but I don't know where the entrance is. Maybe it's down. Now this seems to lock. Can you go back? Probably. Maybe. Wait. <laughs> see, I'm really moved. struggling to see where am I landing exactly. I don't... Even Look at your shadow. Like, I know. That's what makes it so special. Uh, so... No, no button. No button. Let me see where I... You'd, you'd expect the game to... Oh, wait. There's some... No. It could be there. Sorry? It could be there, actually. I doubt it, because if I... Well, if I go down here, it... Right. No. no. Wait, on that side of the... Oh, one, no. There's huh? one down there. No, we both have to be here. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I was too far already. I think I have to help you from... Oh, 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 oh. I killed myself. I have to help you from the other side. Okay. How do you do that? Oh, yeah, I first have to see how to get back to you. <laughs> how did I come here again? Oh, I can Okay. Yeah, I have to help you from this side. So you still have to pass this fan. Oh, damn it. Okay, ah. go and double jump in the fan. <laughs> how, how do I you... I did! You should get higher somehow. Okay. Easy. So basically I have to do it before I get into the fan. That, that was the thing. Okay. Why, why am I just seeing wall here? How is this going to help me? FLCN also says you have to finish it together. Yeah, indeed. Okay. That was indeed what we forgot to do. <laughs> Okay. okay, because the entrance is right there. Oh. So do you want to go through it or do you want to aim it? Uh, I'll aim it. Okay. Now you can jump on here and it will lift you up. Oh, yeah. Get the light off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, you're there. Oh. And then you go in there on the left. Here? Yeah. Now you get to the point where I am. Stokes Easy also said, I think you were supposed uh, to both go through the three fence switch box. Yes. That was a little too much. We were indeed supposed to. Okay, let me see. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you want to try it again? <laughs> oh, where should I go? I don't know! <laughs> I also don't. Oh, I'm still alive. Yes, barely. Oh, I have to go to that side, okay. Do I have to go there? Oh, then you have to switch it. Sorry? Then you, uh, then you have to switch it. Oh, okay. So first I go in here. Mm -hmm. Now switch. Oh, I still die. <laughs> I think I may have been too slow with switching. Okay. Yep, works. Okay. Um. Find Cody. Oh, now I should point it like this. Okay. Um, uh, you can okay. stand on it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, stay low. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Nice. Yes. I think I have to go down. Can you do it again? No, no, like there's actually... Well... Oh no, you have to launch me, and yes. then you have quickly have to jump on it and aim. No. But first you have to press the button, no, 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 because no. I have to go into the vacuum. Do you? Yeah. This will launch me. Okay. Okay, okay you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, quickly. Aim it upwards. Nice. Okay, I have to get sucked in here, I guess? Yeah. Whee! Now what? Oh, okay. See you there. All right, fair enough. Oof. Smooth. Close one. Oh, yeah, you can go in there and I will aim you upwards. This one? Yeah. Uh -huh. What? Hmm. What happened? Do I need to jump maybe I at am? some point? Oh, wait, wait, I think we may need to... Ah, I think I need to throw stuff in there. Oh, yeah, indeed. How do I... I can't pick anything up though, so that's a bit weird. Oh, wait, oh, maybe I Maybe press the button to. there? No, I need to uh, just aim this thing. Ah, yeah, yeah, just and suck them up. Suck it up. Yeah, yeah. That took way too long. Okay. Okay, and that lowers the platform. Are we, uh, yeah, this should be okay. We're done. Uh, okay, you can where's, now. Where's the platform? Behind you. Oh, that's this one. Yeah. It's a robot vacuum. A, a floating robot. Uh, listen, is asking what game is this? This is It Takes Two. So it's a it's a co-op game. Talk Made by Hayslide. Talk about that way. Um, I'm not sure. I think you're supposed to be on the other side. Oh, yep. there we go. So we have to push it together? Yes. Push it real good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Oh, now it's gonna get serious. Uh, boss fight. Yep, boss fight. You destroyed my digestion! You destroyed my digestion! You put me away to rot in here! Master Sandra says I really no. like the looks of this game. Yeah, me too. It looks really no, nice. wait! I can still fix you. I can make you work again. No more flies! No, 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 no! She's right! She's an engineer! A really good one! You are. You're very good. Ha! Oh. Hey, vacuum! Are you... There he is! Collaboration! Oh, no, he's, he's, he's picking a fight! Would not. He's basically saying, hey, vacuum, don't believe them. I get my real body back, I can fix you. 
Mario DS has on Twitch, this game looks awesome. It really is. If you haven't played it yet, really try it. It's really cool. It's just evacuating. <laughs> I see what you did there, CJ Bill. <laughs> Time to go on vacation. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm out of okay, here. Good luck. See you later, good luck. I, I, I stirred shit up real good, so now I'm out of here. My, my job is done. Okay. What do we do? What do we do? Avoid the... Uh, Oh. Alright, we have to attack this. So one needs to suck this up and the other needs to fire it. Okay, you have to be on the other side. Oh, wait, what do you mean the other side? Um, the other side of the vacuum. Yeah. Okay. okay, I will go up there. Okay. You have to suck those things up. Yes. There we go, we can fire it. Oh, now you become good. Okay. I don't see oh, oh, Watch out, watch out. Okay, suck it up. Sorry, go. Sorry, go. Yeah, take that. Keep it going. Can your friend check? Oh, what the hell is this? That doesn't sound good. What the friend the hell is this? Something painful. Yeah. Not really mine, but it made them explode. Um, so they explode after a while, after a set period. Can you fire it? Yep, yep, can. Nice. Okay. Let's go. Not this. We actually use um, only one game license, so I've got the game and I yeah. invited Peter through the, it's called the Friends Pass. So you only need the game once to play with the two of you, even if you're playing online. And you can also play, of course, on a single screen if you want, split screen. Why did she make them look like us? But even if you play you remotely, um, so if you do uh, the online co-op, you still get like a split screen view. So I can still well, come on, let's find her. see what Peter is doing and the other way around. Mm. Where are we? But I think it's know. almost time to uh, use this place. I haven't been to in wrap it up. Ages. Yeah, pretty much. Plus, everything looks different. Yeah, so, I think so too. I'm we defeated the, the, the end boss. Yes, we so yeah, I think it's a nice time. I think so too. Uh, we did quite nicely. I think we can uh, do another winner to, to end it off, and then... Uh, oof. Yeah, th I hope you guys really uh, enjoyed this live stream as well. I hope we... Um, we answered most of the questions. And are you guys still surprised that the system worked? Yeah. <laughs> you still think he had one under the table that he was using? Like that was already <laughs> pre-assembled? <and laughs> I think it's a bit sus. <laughs> Fake it till you make it, right? Exactly. 
All right, we have our last winner as well. Uh, their name is Wrigley. Congratulations. Congratulations, Wrigley. Wrigley, you also win a, a copy of the game. Oh, wait, where's my mouse? Of the game uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, plus the Dawn of Ragnarok DLC. We'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. Thank you all for joining. Uh, again. Oh, wait, can you go back to the chat? I saw a really nice pun by CJ uh, Bill. Oh, oh. That boss sucked. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. I was going to make, uh, uh, yeah. Some Good one. comment about CJ. that as well, like this game <laughs> sucks or whatever, but you know, <laughs> a bit cheap. But yeah, it was fun indeed. So uh, yeah, thank you all for joining. Next week, uh, we are going to be talking about uh, back to school, and we're going to be doing that with the help of a uh, new cool game that I think just launched. Uh, was it today? Or I think yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Two Point Campus. Really looking forward to playing that one as well. It's one of those silly games that kind of is in the category of um, uh, used to be Theme Hospital, and now. Two Point Hospital was the successor to that uh, recently. So yeah, it should be a really fun game as well. So it's like the same look and feel, but then yeah. in a campus setting. Yeah, yeah. so uh, quite interesting. So yeah, I hope you guys join that next week uh, on the uh, same uh, day, same time, same channel. And I'm not sure, I think Eric might be back at that point. So that also might spice yeah, things up be. a bit. So Because I think the combination of us two has been for like three weeks in a row or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. So we'll try to get in Eric next week. Yes, exactly. See if we can break some stuff. Yes, oh, that, that should be easy with Eric. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you right, so guys. much for joining today. Thank and, you. And uh, hope to see you again next week. Same place, same time. Stay safe. Take and care. Goodbye. Bye.